most people in California are mad. From the talk of the town to the whisper of the village. Count to number four, please. Breaking global sports news and the answers to questions you never even thought to ask. Has anyone got a spoon for my kiwi fruit? The two mics. Just like in that film. On Talk Sport. Look at the light! You and your time obsession always kills off the programme. Well, it's nothing to do with that. It's because you spent so much time slagging me off with my uh, alleged bad habits. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics, and I'm delighted to say that after one of the worst weekends in the history of Mike Porky Parry, here he is uh, with a very, very straight face uh, to tell us all about it. Very good morning to you, Mr. Parry. A very good morning, Mike. Nothing to do with a straight face or anything like that. These things happen in life. You have to take the punches, roll, get up, dust yourself down, get on with it. I have to say, many people on Twitter who were giving you quite a lot of clog over yeah. the weekend, not least because of the, uh, the situation from, uh, from uh, Liverpool yeah. and karaoke, but also from the Stanford Bridge experience yeah. from the rather unfortunate waving experience at Runcorn Station. Yeah. Uh, but they did all say Porky Parry will come back fighting. Yeah. He will stand up. He will yeah. not go down uh, miserably. I, I, I'm still a little bit shocked that uh, a venerable publication like the Liverpool Echo can actually take the mickey out of me by mm. telling the world on their <laughs> website that I waved at the Everton team on yeah. Runcorn Station right. as they were departing for London and we were going the other way. Mm. And uh, and they blanked me. I, yes. mean, I mean, you know... Mike Parry humiliates it, it just headline, was it? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, it, it actually said Everton players ignore Mike Parry. Yeah. That's very nice, isn't yeah, it? It is very <laughs> nice. <laughs> it is very oh, yeah. nice. But of course, yeah. uh, and they, they probably didn't want to see you very much at Stamford Bridge either after uh, their appalling performance. Well, that was shocking. Um, I mean, I would... you have to say the porky jinx on that one was pretty strong. Yeah, I wouldn't call it an appalling performance, to be honest. I thought Chelsea were absolutely dynamic. Mm. I think they would have beaten anybody that day. Didn't want to get beaten 5 0. Saw something very strange, actually. Saw quite a few empty seats in the Everton end. Really? In the second half. Yes. Yeah, I've never seen that before because I see probably more away games, Everton away games than I do home games yeah, for right. obvious reasons yeah. so I live 250 London, miles yeah. away that's right and I've always admired enormously the loyalty of the Everton fans and the, the stoicness with which they've taken you know difficult seasons over the years and I've never seen empty seats in the second half well, before. Well when was the last time they lost quite so heavily as that in the Premier I've, League? I've, I've never seen them lose right. that heavily in mm. the Premier League. Well that may be why then. Yeah, I, I, I mean in all my life mm. not, not just in the Premier League, in the whole of my life, yeah. I've never seen Everton lose that heavily. Really? And I've never, you know, and, and in the Premier League, when I've, how many away games have been to? Maybe about eight or nine a season over 20 years. So probably in 150 games, yeah. never seen them lose right. by more than um, three, I think. Mm. Um, and that was only once. So it was a bit of a shock. But uh, It was a bit of a shock. Things, Did yeah. you stay until the end of the game? Yeah, of course. Did yeah. you? I mean, I always do, you know, but... Mm. Uh, it's it's uh, the only reason you'd want to leave any time sooner than than the end is to get to the bar quicker because uh, I was in need of um, <laughs> refreshments. Yeah, I could imagine. I was. Well, I presume that uh, with the uh, hospitality and all that at Chelsea, which is, I'm yeah. told, very, very good, I wouldn't know because you've never taken yeah. me there, yeah. uh, but uh, I would imagine that uh, you were well refreshed anyway, weren't you? Well, not over-refreshed, as no. you're insinuating. Not we went to a place called that. Under the Bridge, which is, uh, I think it's Mr. Abramovich's well, no, sort of... T- under the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> I think it's his sort of personal nightclub, you know mm. what I mean? But he yes. it on match days for about two or three hours. Yeah. And um, you meet a lot of nice people in there. It's very good and all that kind of stuff. Anyway. I was talking to a Chelsea fan colleague, uh, a former colleague of mine over the weekend, who said he thought that was their best performance under Abramovich. Well, Jason said that, didn't he, earlier? Did he? He... uh, he, um... Well, under Abramovich. Yeah. Well, they've won the Champions League, haven't yeah. they? So, no, but he said he yeah. thought that 90-minute performance was their best performance. Well, if it was, it's only Petty Everton were on the pitch then against them. I don't think it signals any crisis or anything like that. But, I mean, Mr Coleman were... said afterwards, you know, it was it, the Chelsea were there on an unstoppable day. You know? But Mr Koeman had also been praised by mm. you on Saturday on our yeah. show on the warm-up, yeah. uh, by, by where you said, you know, the great thing about Ronald Koeman is he's bolstered Everton's defence. Yes, that's right. Unfortunately, that didn't quite work out. It didn't quite work out. No, um, but anyway, look, these things happen. Getting down to getting round to your karaoke singing. Yeah. I mean, it was all right. It was average, but I mean, well, listen, I was as shocked as anybody yeah. when I got all this praise on Twitter. Yeah, from exactly. People saying, I was you know, as well. Can't believe how good your voice is. Yeah, but it, you know, it, when it, are you doing? Uh, when are you? Well, somebody actually said, yeah. you know, where's the tour dates coming out? And I said, well, actually, we've only got one left to, uh, this uh, right. this this year up in uh, the garage in Glasgow. That's right, on December the seventeenth. Yes, and in fact, he said, no, I don't mean that. He said, I mean your solo singing tour. Yeah. Well, 
well, uh, your solo singing tour will be solo, pal, because I won't be accompanying you on that one. But well, I mean, I mean, you've been very mealy mouthed and, no, and dismissive about it. You the, have. I, you've been putting things like disgraceful on Twitter and well, the only, shocking outbursts, and you know, you haven't actually said that you thought my singing voice was any good. The only thing I would say is that I couldn't actually hear your singing voice because of the background noise in the pub. Well, if you can't in which hear you it, in. if you can't if hear late it. night pubs until two in the morning, mm. there's going to be a lot of sort of noisy people about, and I couldn't actually hear your voice. So. To me, it was just a cacophony of sort of catawailing noise. Well, you maybe, know what you're I mean? not, maybe you're not listening properly. Well, I was listening properly. Would you like to have another listen to it? Not particularly. OK, let's play it then. Actually, the more I hear that, the more yeah. I'm, I'm not. Now I'm not quite so surprised. People said it was very good. Oh, that's no, pretty good. No, no, you've got to understand. You've got to understand. Most of that voice is my mate Liam Gallagher. No, it isn't. It is. No, it's karaoke. It's, I'm singing yeah, it. There is no, no voice. No, there is. There and is. You're, tell, you're saying to me that that's Liam. I see, uh, yeah, I am. So, in actual fact, that is the best compliment you can pay me. No, because there is no Liam Gallagher. No, on that. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Do you understand what karaoke is? Of course, I understand what karaoke is. Karaoke I'm an expert is in music, karaoke. Is, are you? But there's two versions of a karaoke song. You no. either get it. Absolutely clean, and no. it's just the music That's in the what background. That was. That's what that or was. you get it with a very low um, uh, replication no. No. of the voice no. of the original singer, well, which I is t- clearly I, what that is. No, I take that as a massive compliment no, because no, that no, is no. my rubbish. voice. Rubbish, it's not. That is my voice. No, and there was more than one person singing there anyway. No, You've been wasn't. helped along by a couple of no, members of the video, crowd. There's video there. Right? I'll put it back out on uh, on Twitter because there is, in fact, video yeah. uh, which was filmed by, by our good friend Ian yeah. uh, who was at the show with his wife, Julie. Yes. And, uh, you yes. know, I'm afraid they are both witnesses to it, well, as indeed is my daughter, Emma, who's never knowingly told a lie in her life. No. Except when so she's hope, trying to defend so hope, your reputation so hope, on uh, so you know, you a multiplicity uh, of issues. I hope you won't cast aspersions on any of those people who no. are very, very good, honest, decent people. I don't know why you can't just bring yourself to say no, that no. I've got a great voice. No, 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 no. I'm, uh, I'm just trying to get the facts of the situation straight. Mind you, um, the only reason we were in that pub is because the Adelphi wouldn't let us back into our in, own yeah, hotel. But you weren't in it, though. You weren't even there. No, it wasn't there because I well, don't... Well, when you say the only reason we yeah. were in that pub, mm. what do you mean? Well, I mean, we as a group, you know, the, the, the <laughs> yeah, talk sport say we, production crew. When you say we, mm, mm. that yeah, normally means including yourself. Well, that's the royal we, isn't right, it? Right, OK. And, well, uh, I'll tell you what, why don't we trans, uh, transform what I was singing yeah. about and let's have a listen to you singing instead. This is not me. Yes, it is. It's not. At first I was afraid, I was <laughs> petrified, <laughs> thinking I couldn't live without you by my side. And I've been spending nights thinking how you did me wrong. And I grew strong, and I learned how to get along. And now you're back from outer space. And I find you here with that I'm pretty sure that's, I think that's pretty good. I'm pretty sure that's not Gloria Gaynor's voice no, underneath the track. No, no. But it's not meant to be Gloria Gaynor. It's meant to be my interpretation of it. And I think that is actually quite good. I'd forgotten all about uh, that one, actually. Lied as well. When did I do that? I don't why? know. Quite a long, no, quite yeah, a few years ago. Exactly, yeah, yeah. But it's, you see, you never, nothing is ever yeah. lost to the archives. No, that's absolutely true. Um, however, um, we won't be standing at the Adelphia again. And, we uh, certainly won't. Don't wish to be unkind to the members of staff there. But when you, well, I do. When you, um, I wish to be very unkind. These four bouncers on the door saying uh, you can only come in here if you're a, a resident. How on earth does the hotel exist? I know. Pe- I mean, most... well, do you know that somebody, I don't know what you paid for the mm. rooms, but somebody tweeted me on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, I mean, lots of people tweeted saying, you know, it's been a terrible hotel for a long time. Dump, what on yeah. earth were you doing staying there? Yeah. Liverpool has got many much better hotels. Well, it has, but this was a three minute walk from the venue. Well, that's, so that's why we well, stayed no, there. It, was, no, it wasn't that close to the venue, it's, but the thing was. It's three minute walk from Lime Street Station. Three minute walk from the station, so which is very, very convenient. Which was very handy in the morning. Mm. But somebody actually put something up from the internet where mm. you could book rooms. For sixteen quid a night, yeah. 
16, 16 quid. Well, I mean, you put me in a hotel that cost 16 quid a night. <laughs> no, no, we paid a bit more than that. Shocking, absolutely I don't book the rooms. Thing. Anyway, I only sign them off, and uh, it costs well, more than 16, believe me. Well, whoever booked the rooms should be fired from the organisation. But the, I don't know how the hotel works. Most decent hotels I've ever stayed in, 80% of the people there after 11 o'clock are not residents anyway. They're resident friends or, or their pals. Well, or their... effectively what they said was yeah. that you can't bring anybody back to That's the hotel. Right. So if you wanted to some horizontal refreshment, exactly. which was not what I was after, actually, That's right. you wouldn't have been allowed in with anyone. Well, you'd, you'd have, ridiculously, in a double room, you'd have to buy another room for the person you're bringing back yeah, to the hotel. I offered to do that. Really I just... said, well, I want to get this, yeah. this couple a room. You yeah. know, there was, uh, you know, Ian and Julie. I That's said, right, yeah. Well, I'll go and book them a room. Yeah. And the bloke was like, you'll no. have to do it online. That's right. I said, well, you're not letting us into the lobby of the hotel to book a room. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. When the three guys behind the bar, who were very surly individuals, emerged the following morning because we were up and away very early to get a very early train back here. Um, they were all wearing like multicoloured fleeces. It was a very weird hotel. Yeah. It was more like a sort of asylum, if you know what I mean. It was more like a prison. It was, yeah. It did, have, like a prison, it did, yeah. It did have some yeah. horrible sort of similarities yeah. to the hotel in The Shining. Yeah, very, it was very. The corridors. I kept expecting to see a kid on a tricycle. No, I, I wouldn't surprise me as well. <laughs> a very, very strange the time, uh, by the way. atmosphere. Uh, time you have now. The time, good news yeah. is, of mm. course, there's also an NFL game to keep you updated with tonight. The other big, to big, bore us to other death, big yeah. news for you: Steve Nichol uh, is going to be coming oh, on. Oh, great! So complete your miserable weekend. Liverpool top of the league uh, after a massive win against. Don't worry, Watford. I'll smash him intellectually. Uh, will you? Okay. Uh, we shall talk to Mr. Nichol coming up very shortly. This is Talk Sport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Great song, that. Who's that? Elvis Costello. Elvis Costello, yeah. Okay. He's in Liverpool, isn't he? Is he? Yeah. I didn't know that, I have to admit. Mm. Um, listen, I think we should, at this stage, pay tribute to a colleague from the radio business. Mr Jimmy Young. Jimmy Young, yes. I'm afraid, has sadly uh, passed away. Well, sadly, he was uh, 95. Yes. So uh, he had a very long life, very successful life, and, uh, you know, became a broadcasting legend. Gentleman Jim, the radio king, is one headline. That's right. He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't, they're not referring to him as Sir Jimmy Young, so he never got a knighthood, I guess, did he? Did he not? Well, I presume he didn't. Yeah, it says here, radio legend Sir Jimmy Young, oh, whose 50 year show business career began as a singer, died yesterday at the age of 95. Mm. Sir Jimmy, for decades one of the most recognised and best loved voices on the BBC, died peacefully oh, yeah, at yeah. home with his wife Alicia by his side. Mm. So that's fact number one that you've managed to blow out the water <laughs> in the show tonight. <laughs> Jimmy well, Young wasn't a, a knight of the realm. Well, I mean, because... I, How can I, you do I, this to people's reputations? I say he doesn't appear to be being referred to as Sir Jimmy Young. He's what? just being referred to as Jimmy Young. Oh, and then I just read the first line of the story. Radio legend well, Sir Jimmy Young. Well, you missed that, here, did you? Well, I didn't read the first line of the story you're <laughs> reading. I'm looking at this. He was the housewife's favourite. You're interviewed every PM. But mm. Jimmy Young mm. only turned to radio after being saved from suicide by a psychic. Oh, yeah. Then the headline says, Gentleman Jim. It doesn't yeah. say anything about Sir Jimmy Young. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but if you know anything about life, you know that Jimmy Young was a sir. I did, so... Uh, well, you didn't uh, seem to until you read the story. Oh, uh, no, no. Do you I think did. you'll ever get a knighthood for that? Uh, so no, just a broadcast. No, I would never seek patronage from the establishment like that, right? that. Once you seek patronage from the establishment, mate, you're finished. Is that right? That's why, uh, that's why Keith Richards is that why you, you don't so spend... dismissive about Sir Mick Jagger. Is that you why know? you don't spend most of your time sucking up to the establishment I, and I, trying I, to make I, sure I, that they uh, recognise your great efforts? I don't suck up to the establishment at all, mate. Now, here's one from Steve. He says, right, I am I'm actually asking Mike Perry to sing tonight his favourite chant, Boo Hoo Lukaku. <laughs> yeah, some chance, pal. Nigel says, ask Mike Perry how his date went on Saturday. Mm. Did he come across any hazards or did it cost a lot? Uh, I'm not going to get into that. You know, they, they, there are things in your life you don't want to talk about. One thing I will talk about is that you think that the biggest incident that happened on the train going up to uh, Liverpool, Liverpool was the Everton... What a great weekend that was. The, it was, the Everton players being on the other platform. Well, I would say, mm. I would say, the you know, the most uh, gut-wrenching moment for me yeah. was when we passed the Jaguar factory yeah. at Speak at Halewood. Halewood, yes. And you started jumping up and down and, like a child saying that's where my car was made. That's not what I said. Yes, you did. No, because you that's did. where the Land Rover Evoque is made, yeah. the Range Rover Evoque. I yeah. don't even know if the Jaguar Jaguars are made, made there, there, there as well. Well, I don't know if the f place is actually made there. Yeah, well, Do you, you know, know that for a fact? Uh, well, I can tell you. So that'll be I the first you. fact that you have no, basically no. hazarded a guess at. Oh, no, not at You've all. You've just taken not a pin. I've taken a punt. I am more right than wrong on that one, believe me. Really? Um, that's unusual. Yeah, now uh, then, now then. Here's one from Dom who says, Noel Gallagher sings Don't Look Back in Anger 
Porky, you plank. Yes. Get your facts right, you charlatan. Yes, exactly. That's ben what I'm says, saying. fantastic singing, Porky is jealous. No, I'm not jealous at all. Andrew honestly. says, Mike, great, way, way better than Liam for sure. Um, you've got to remember that when you are as inebriated as you were on Saturday night and you start singing karaoke... I wasn't that inebriated. You can actually, you can actually start sounding quite good simply because you've lost your, your senses. Well, we might literally. hear a bit more of it later on. No, I don't think we will. Abdul says, MG, fantastic voice, I have to say, makes me not want to hear Porky sing again. Porky, just say the man is a good singer. Well, you'll, you see, you can't bring yourself to do that. You'll all you? change your minds. Now, listen, we have an announcement to make, and I think it's about time we did. Uh, yes, we do have an announcement to make. We are in the process of, as we speak, yes. producing our new DVD. No, we've produced it. We're in the process now of actually distributing it. Well, we're not in the process of distributing it. We're in the process of producing it. No, because it's not quite it. ready to be handed out to people yet. Is it, it is, yeah. Oh, what, so people can go and get it now? Uh, let me tell you this. The first shipment is coming from Belgium on Wednesday. Wednesday. It will then be available. For Belgium? Yeah, it is. It is. That's where they manufacture our uh, DVDs. I hope Brexit has affected the, uh, yeah, the, right, uh, the yeah. scenario. Because remember there was... Uh, yeah. Was there not yeah. some problem yeah. with the with the, uh, with the, the the docks last time? Yeah, there was, yeah. Where it was held up in got a shipping imp- container. It did. It got, compa- it got it, impounded. It, it compounded. It even. compounded or impounded. Um, no, the point is, it's, um, I thought that our uh, commercial people had put it up on our website for sale. Uh, they haven't. Yet, but what we have, what, what, uh, what you can do is you can pre order right. uh, the downloaded version of it, right? On oh, Vimeo. You can? Yes, and what I'm going to do shortly is right. put out on Twitter excellent. and on Facebook a place, the place where you can go to do that. That's excellent. Uh, and it should be available to download physically uh, in the next few days. That's excellent. Uh, the DVD, it should be orderable as well on our website, the twomikes.co.uk. Tomorrow? Um, it's from tomorrow, yes. From tomorrow, okay. Well, if you order it tomorrow, I can promise you, you will have it. Um, I think the first, um, the, the first shipment. Is arriving, is it? Uh, I think we'll start sending them out on Friday. The most important thing is yeah. you will be you'll be able to get it well in time for Christmas. Oh, wait, wait. I mean, I mean, what's the day today? Is it the uh, the eighth, well, November the eighth? Yeah, by the fifteenth, they will be uh, dropping on your doorsteps. Yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. If you order now, exactly, yeah. okay. absolutely. Uh, so look out on Twitter and on Facebook. We'll put out the link as to where you can get it from. Of yeah. course, and and, the, and it is just to remind you, it's uh, it's a compilation of our three nights at the Edinburgh Festival. Uh, which was a sparkling occasion, sparkling experience. It's all there on the DVD. But there's also quite a bit of us wandering about. Oh, Edinburgh that's right. Yeah, a bit of a tour the of, the, of the um, the Royal Mile and all that kind of stuff. It was uh, it was an excellent period of our lives. It was. It's all there on tape. That's uh, great. St- Steve says this. I don't like karaoke normally, but that mm. was very good. MG, what was Porky singing? Mm. Uh, so why am I alive? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't quite follow well, that. Well, that song that you were singing earlier. That was that uh, Gloria that Gaynor. Was Gloria Gaynor. So uh, why am I alive? Yeah, but I mean, it was a it was a sort of uh, disco version of "I Will Survive." Ah, okay. Scott says, uh, "Jesus," I would say. Sounds like Porky strangling a cat. I must say, MG, I was very impressed with your singing performance. Uh, very impressed with your singing performance. Wayne says, "I'm still you. surprised at the high pitch of the voice. Unusual for a bigger guy." Yeah, well, well, we've not, well, not heard like Charlie Pavarotti singing. Yeah, well, you know, he's quite the, a big guy. I think the bigger guy stuff is very relevant. Listen, I want to tell you something which is weird, right? Don't want to talk about weird. this anymore, do you? Yes, I do. Yeah, I don't mind talking about it, but I'm going to talk about another pop star now, yeah. right? And it's uh, it's the guy Alex James, who is the bassist with Blur. Alex James. Yeah, yeah. You heard of him? I have. Right, he's, uh, okay. he's a bit of a part-time chef, isn't he? Um, is he? Anyway, listen, the point of the story is, this is an amazing story, and you might have some insight on it, uh-huh. looking at your hair, right? What it, do you mean, looking at my hair? Well, it says here, Blur bassist Alex James has revealed he's just washed his hair for the first time in ten years. Really? Yeah. What, is he a Rastafarian? I don't know. He, he said he took the plunge after his two daughters plastered him in grey hairspray for Halloween. Right. So his hair got solid. So he said, my hair isn't really something I've ever particularly thought about or fussed over. We can say that again. Hmm. Other than this weekend, where my daughter's emptied a whole can of grey hairspray into it and it's set solid, I haven't actually washed it for ten years. Really? <laughs> well, that, he must have put it under water, surely. He says he hasn't. Well, he, he must have done. He must have done. He must have gone swimming. He must have been in the sea. He must have been under no, a shower. No, no. not meaning he doesn't... It just means he hasn't shampooed it, probably. He sa- no, he says he lives 80 miles out of London, right? Oh, well, they've got water there. Sorry? Haven't they got water? No, no, he said, London. London. he said, I travel 18 miles into London to get my hair cut my favourite uh, hairdresser. What, and they don't wash it? But I've never had it washed. He's never had his hair washed? In 10 years. I don't believe it. Well, I'm not, you can't call the man a liar. He's, I don't believe it. He, right, he said, I have not washed my hair for 10 years. Well, maybe it means somebody else has washed it. No, he says, I haven't had my hair washed for 10 years. Mm. Well, I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. That doesn't sound right at all. You he cannot, says, "How can you not wash your hair for ten years?" 
That's ridiculous. Do you know um, when we worked in Fleet Street, there yes. was a chap who I worked with at one paper, and mm. then he, I think he left and went to the Mirror. Was his name John Moose? John something. Moose. Was it Moose? No. I know, not Moose as in the, the Moose we've got No, you're in M-O-U-S-S-E or something. Yeah, that's no, right. And, um, never heard of him. I think you will have done. He wore glasses and he had a ponytail. Oh, you mean the Moose? On, uh, no, on the back bench. Yeah, he was known as Moose. Was he known as Moose? He was that's, known as Moose. That's, that's right, yeah, yeah. John was his name. Yeah, John, that wasn't right. his last name. Yeah, OK. Well, he, he never washed his hair. He said. He said no. He said I, I've I've researched it. The well, natural, he never told me that. Yeah, yeah. The natural oils in your hair will actually keep your hair in great shape, mm. and by washing it, you wash the natural oils out. Well, that's all very well and if you live in a place where uh, yeah. there's no there's no pollution and there's nothing making your hair filthy. Maybe. But if you I travel on the London Underground, for example, on a daily basis, mm. your hair will get pretty dirty. Well, he says he never washed it, and he, for about two years, he told me he never washed it, and he did put well, it into Rastafari. He never said that stuff, to me. No, he? no, he didn't. He had it in a ponytail. Ponytail. That's right. Yeah. Well, he, well, he yeah, but he plaited the ponytail. I remember. I remember. But he told me he never washed it. Really? You know? And I said, Are you sure? It John Moorhead. His name was. More Head, that's right, yeah. Mm. More head, yeah. Mm. Um, he said, No, how odd is that? That what, is very strange. How, how very odd is that? That is yeah. very strange. I think yeah. the reason I'm saying I think he's a chef of some description is I think he was in Master Chef and I think he might have even won it really? a few years ago, Alex James. Yeah. Ah, okay. And also, I think he's done a couple of cookbooks and things like that. Cookbooks, as well. eh? Yeah. Right. We'll right. be doing a bit of that as well, won't we? Coming out with our new website soon. Yes, indeed. The new website's coming out soon. It's going to have a cookbook page. It's going to have a campaign page that we're starting because, of course, I'm always, uh, you know, quite uh, partial to a campaign. And now that you've uh, made the breakthrough, uh, I'm going to allow you to share my karaoke page. Your karaoke page? Yes. So you're going to have one, are you? Yes, we are. Are you yeah. going to be using the karaoke machine that has the voice underneath it or the one that has no voice underneath uh, both, it? Both. Both, you know. Because I'm use... looking forward to hearing you produce yeah. a karaoke machine that has somebody else singing on it. I use an enhancer sometimes because that is what it's called. What, for your hair? No, no, an enhancer on the karaoke machine. That's exactly... I've just researched it. That's what you had. No. It's called an enhancer. No, it's not. And it, and it has a trail of no. the original song no. with the voice. Absolutely not. No, it does. Absolutely not. It does. It's completely it does. Completely wrong. It does. No, don't get worked up. Now, uh, we're going to be talking to Steve Nicholl, uh, who's going to be a very happy man this weekend, I would imagine. Yes. Uh, we'll keep you updated as well uh, on the Saddle Seahawks game against the Buffalo Bills in the NFL. This is TalkSport. <laughs> uh, what do you want to be? Do you really want to be? I really want to be what I really want to be. Oh, I really, 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 really want to be. <laughs> You know what you want to be? Do you really want to be? Oh, all that kind of stuff. Want to be? Really, really want to When I go on a stage now, I go on a stage to try and keep you under control in the Two Mike's live show. Yeah, I, I go on stage to prance around the microphone and start singing. You know. That's exactly what you do. Want to be? Are you going to sing along to this then? Well, not well, you really. Listen to the real words, though. Sorry? You can listen to the real words. I uh, but... tell you what, I want what I really, really want. I don't know what I want, but you really, really want. I don't know what you want. If you want to be my lover, you gotta get with my friends. Want to be my so, uh, I saw that you put a tweet out earlier on tonight yes. saying that this was going to be a no-singing show. That's yes. not worked out too well so far, has it? Well, I mean... I mean how many shows have we done where yeah. the first half an hour has yeah. been taken up with you singing about four different songs? No, 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 not at all. It's just that I, I have a very musical aptitude and I sometimes turn expressions or phrases or things that we're talking about into a very short sort of uh, two or three second burst of uh, song. That's I all. I see. Well, Woodenhead That's all says it is. this. Mike Parry 100% yeah. said he would like to be the New Year's Honours list. I remember it well. No, I don't yes, think I, I have. I remember I've that. said that. Yeah, I if I did well. something which I thought was worth worthy of uh, reward for my country, then I'd be proud to do it. Okay, but I don't want to be given. You're a... saying you haven't done anything like that yet? Well, I've done lots of things, but it's about public recognition. And what I, you know, I wouldn't want to get a uh, a knighthood or something like that just because I'd worked in the cabinet office for ten years or something like that. Well, I don't think there's much chance of that. Is no, it? there's no chance of that whatsoever. Mm. And you know, they're wastrels and bums, those people, and uh, I despise. If you've got your political head on now, yeah. D Law says. No Jags are made at Hellwood anymore, Porky. Land Rover and Range Rover only. So yeah, that's yes. why I didn't jump up and down, because I'm pretty sure it wasn't you, made there. You were jumping up and I down. I was not jumping. Listen, one, research, one yeah. as, as you often describe mm. me as, mm. as rather laconic, mm. I do not go around jumping about. Yes. It's not what I do. Now, listen, the American flavour is going to be in the show all this week. Yes. Um, did you know... Do Janet... you know what the score is, by the way? Buffalo Bills against the Seattle Seahawks. Not only do I not want to know There's the an score, American flavour, as neither, you just said. Neither do our millions of listeners yes, want to know. Do. Because nobody that listens to this show follows American yes, football. Yes, they do. So I wouldn't well, worry about well, it. Well, okay. I'm sure that you will now have a barrage of tweets from people yeah. uh, saying, please keep us updated on the score. It happens to be a nil-nil or a zero-zero. Zero-zero. Now then, uh, are you aware of Janet Reno? Janet Reno, yes. She's dead. 
What? She's dead. Really? Yeah, she was the uh, she was she US was the attorney general. She think? was the first uh, female US attorney general. Yeah. She was appointed by Bill Clinton shortly after he got into I mean, power. Have you ever thought of being in, in the sort of um, Samaritans business? I mean, right. it's not a nicer way you could have said that. What do you mean? Have you ever heard of Joni Reno? Yes, she's dead. <laughs> well, I mean, she what's wrong with you? Afraid, yeah. Well, the point is, she was a very controversial figure because. Um, she was the woman, believe it or not. I shouldn't be laughing. She said... She uh, was the Waco, Texas woman. She said, we will resolve the Waco situation yeah. peacefully. Don't panic. Yeah. Because she was getting criticised for the standoff. You yes, know, that's saying, right. what's he seem to be doing? He's sitting there and watching this nutty guy, the mm. Davidian cult guy. What's his name? David, David Qureshi. Qureshi, that's right, yeah. Uh, holding these people hostage and, and, and brainwashing their minds. Well, he wasn't really holding them hostage, though. They were there willingly, weren't well, they? Well, not really, because, uh, because then he, he bolted all the doors, didn't he, when the drug enforcement agency decided to Well, he bolted all the doors and set yeah. fire to the place. Well, he eventually set fire to the place, yeah. Um, but that was also, it was not just the FBI, was it? Because I remember a lot of people in this oh, country it, first, it was... first were very, very puzzled because That's I was right. in London, I was running the foreign desk at the Express, yeah. and people were going, why, they, why have they got let the ATF letters That's on right. the back? Yeah, that's right. Because you'd never heard of them. What was that, alcohol? Alcohol, tobacco, tobacco and, and firearms. firearms. That's right, yeah, they were all running around as and well. it was like, the ATF so, are here. So she said, we'll resolve this peacefully and all that. And all of a sudden, it went up. Like a bonfire, didn't yeah. it? I mean, oh, it was shocking. started off as a, a, as a small fire in one part of this uh, this Camp Davidian, and it, I've never seen anything burn like it in my life. It was like people were pouring petrol on yeah. him. Well, they may well have done. I mean, he was a complete yeah. madman, wasn't well, he? Well, he left. He left. Um, apparently, he left bowls of petrol all over the place, you know, and, and down the corridors and everything. So, if, if, if there was a spark, it was going to go up, but it certainly did. Yes, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Well, I'm terribly sorry to hear that she's died uh, because she couldn't have been that old. Yeah, I'm, I'm very sorry to hear she died. She was, in fact, 78. Okay. So, yeah. But I remember. Well, she was quite. A, she was a very senior figure in American political history. I would she was very controversial from day one because she was very liberal. So, and she was an attorney general, and people thought she's been too like soft on mm. crime and all that. And I remember after one particular day when you know the Washington Post had highlighted something. I, I saw on television, she came on and she said, you know, it must have been a trying day for you. She said, not really. She said, I got home tonight. She lived in the old post office, right, which is on uh, Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh-huh. It was just along from where I lived. It was between, actually halfway between me and the White House. Was it? She said, uh, I well, got home. Well, you were at the sort of unfashionable end, weren't you? No, I was at the very fashionable end, actually. I was very near the Canadian Embassy. You know that new, beautiful building, no. the Canadian Embassy? No, I don't. Near the, um, much nearer the capital than the White House, right? So, yeah, but uh, that's, not the, that's not the fashionable end. It is if you're this side of the capital. The, behind the capital is the very unfashionable Behind part, the capital was what you could only describe yeah. as yeah. bandit territory. That's right, indeed. But anyway, um, she got and she said, uh, no, I, uh, I may have had a... A hard day, but I've had a good evening. She said, I got into my apartment tonight and I received two phone calls. The first one was from my sister saying, Janet, stick with it. You're a good woman and you're doing it for your country. And the second one was from the President of the United States of America. That made me feel good, you know, <laughs> and, all, and, all, and all this I don't kind think of she stuff. sounded like a sort of gangster from Chicago's in her 30s. No, right? but she was like, uh, as you quite rightly say, Texas Deep South type She woman. was. Yeah. She was very, very, uh, very interesting woman anyway. Yeah, she uh, was, now, she, her first job was she was appointed state attorney for Dade County. Yeah. It's so famous, Dade County, isn't Dade it? Dade County, Florida. Yeah, that's yeah, right. It's yeah. quite famous. Yeah, exactly. Because that, that was in Miami Vice, wasn't it? Oh, and all that. Yeah. yeah. Scott says this, Alex James is now an award-winning cheesemaker. Oh, is he? That's right, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's right. Well, because i tell you why. There was a guy who used to be an actor in Coronation Street. Um, he played a male nurse, uh-huh. and he was married to Gail for a while, I think. He's been married to, like, almost everybody in Coronation mm. Street. And um, he left the show, and the next thing is he popped up in, like, somewhere like Yorkshire, and he was making cheese. Mm. And he, I remember reading a piece about him doing this cheese, and he said that he'd become big mates with Alex Burr. Oh, yeah. Is it Alex Burr? Alex Blur. Uh, Blur. No. <laughs> What's his name? Hang on, who are we talking Alex about Alex Blur. No, we'll go with that. No. That's fine. Alex James, sorry. Alex James. James yeah. Alex. Yeah, yeah, Alex James. And, James Blur. And said what, uh, what you know, they become... It's James Blunt, isn't it? What? It's James Blunt. What are you on about? Well, we're just mixing up all the names. No, now. no, no, no. I'm talking about Alex James of Blur. Alex James of Blur. Yes, that's right. And they've become right. big mates. Dom and, uh, says maybe yeah. MG and uh, uh, Mike Perry should do a Simon and Garfunkel style song. 
That would be quite appropriate, wouldn't yeah, it? it would be because they really hate yeah. each other. Yeah, they do, they do actually. But I mean, by the way, yeah. the story of the day surely mm. has to be. Mm. Aside from that tweet that was put out earlier tonight about, you know, uh, is it just a coincidence that you two are doing a live show after yes. two people have escaped from Pentonville? Yeah, which seems to be a complete shambles. Did you see that they got diamond <laughs> cutting equipment sent in over the wire by uh, by a drone? <laughs> right? That's right. Yeah, they yeah. then put a couple of dummies in the bed. I know Alcatraz and escaped. Style. Oh, yeah. You know, like hours before they it was discovered they were missing. Sure. I mean, what on earth is going on inside the prisons? Yeah, but surely the story of the day is what well, I was going to say. Sports diamond. Yeah. Well, that was what I was going to say, and then I got sidetracked because right. because they were, these were the two stories of the day. The alleg- uh, but, the, but the sport the guy did the sports director basically bug a room full of well, MPs. The allegation is that a, a bunch of MPs go there because uh, they're on a on a fact finding mission. They're in a room on their own, apparently, without any sports direct people being there. Yeah. A lady is sent in to take the cakes, but within this cake um, uh, arrangement is uh, a secret camera yeah. and recording equipment. Well, there seems to be two versions, don't there? One is yeah. that it was inside a cake or a sandwich. Yes. The other that it was sort of being stuck under a chair by someone, rather obviously. Yeah, I'll give you this version. Sports Direct Chief sent a sandwich woman with a recording device to spy on MPs visiting its warehouse. <laughs> The politicians were inspecting the retail giant's HQ yesterday after boss Mike Ashley faced calls to quit for paying staff below the minimum uh, wage. Six MPs taken on a three-hour tour of the premises before heading to a room to have private discussions. The woman is alleged to have then come in and put the sandwiches on a seat and the MPs spotted what they claim was a secret device underneath. It's not exactly James Bond, is it? Not really. Labour's Anne Turley took a picture of the gadget alongside the Sarnies and put it on Twitter. (laughs) And it looks just like one of those things that James Bond put on the back of Goldfinger's car. Yeah, well, a big block. Yeah, a big block thing, yeah. (laughs) Well, if it's a sports direct, uh, you know, sort of buggy device, it won't exactly be top of the range, right? Exactly. She said, I I went over to pick up the device (laughs) and there it was, a camera and a recording device for the conversations that we were having privately. I'm very disappointed. Apparently, um, apparently... They're not commenting, by the way. A sports, sports direct, direct spokesman declined to comment. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Um, I, well, I, uh, I come across... They'll be recording uh, something later. I've come across a, a story that's going to worry you. And, it's 7-0, uh, by the way, to Buffalo Bills. Nobody cares. Uh, I've got uh, this from James. He says, he said, we want our NFL, NBA and MLB updates by MG every five minutes, please. So, uh, Porky, just deal with it. Listen, do you know what uh, this new craze is to damage cars? Kids what? are throwing themselves at windscreens and smashing windscreens in posh cars. Really? Like yours. What, you mean while they're parked? Yeah, teenagers are hurling themselves at car windscreens and smashing them in a craze known as body slamming. Really? <laughs> Why God. are they doing that? One victim claimed at least 20 cars have been targeted in the same area and others have reported incidents. Well, which area? Uh, well, all over the place. One of them was in Armley in Leeds, right? OK. Where a woman installed CCTV after one of her neighbour's cars got broken right. and saw a, saw a youth hurl himself at the windscreen. What they do is they hurl themselves at the windscreen, mm. shoulder the windscreen, right. roll across the bonnet and get off and run off on the other side. Are you talking about the front windscreen? The front windscreen, smashing them. They're really? smashing them in, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What a horrendous thing to do. A 23-second video shows a boy charging at the windscreen with his left shoulder, shattering the glass before leaping off the bonnet and sprinting away, followed by four others. My goodness. Yeah. Well, is it happening anywhere in London? Um, I'm just trying to find out for you. Images of the of a similar incident in Frodham, Cheshire. Cheshire. Right. 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 Cheshire. Cheshire. Frodham, Cheshire. Yeah. Near where I came from, yeah. right? In fact, we were, we passed there in, in the train the other we? day. They're on Corn Woodness Bridge, oh, yeah. very close to Florida. You got a bit glassy eyed there, didn't you? I did a bit, yeah. Or well, did you have something in it? No, no, no. Um, I they told you they didn't have Smash windscreen wine. on a Volkswagen, Volkswagen, Volkswagen. Golf. <laughs> yeah, Volkswagen. Yeah, yeah, the Volkswagen. <laughs> no, no, I'm a Volkswagen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's my Volkswagen? Yeah, Alex Blur's um, got one of them. Yeah, he probably, he probably keeps the cheese in the Volkswagen boot. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, you'll be delighted to know uh, yeah. that we're out of time. And uh, Steve Nicholl is preparing himself as we speak uh, to give you a going over because of what happened at the weekend. Bring it on. Steve Nicholl's up next. The Two Mics. Simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. I'm going- Mark has uh, tweeted, Paul, he says, Ray, yes. the hair washing, uh, I think what uh, uh, the, 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 the phrase that he's using, I'm not going to use the phrase that he's put in here, but he yes. says uh, it means they don't basically use commercial hair, hair shampoos. 
So, I mean, when he says he hasn't washed his hair for 10 years, I think that's what he means. No, he says he hasn't washed it for 10 years. Well, yeah, I know, but I think he just means he hasn't used commercial hair, you know, commercial shampoo. What do you think he does? He goes in the shower and shakes his hair under the water or something? Let me put it this way. He hasn't spent the last 10 years without getting water on his hair, has he? How do you know? Well, because you can't. You have to have a well, shower. I'm sorry, that's what he's claiming. You have to have a shower. It gets wet when you when, well, you, when can it have, rains. You can have a shower without uh, wetting your head. You can, but you can't go swimming really without wetting your How head. How do you know you? he swims? Well, you think he doesn't swim? Yeah, there's no evidence of him swimming. There's well, when no did evidence you, when did you last go for a swim? Well, you go on holiday with your children I swam all the in time Sicily, in the sea and ignore your work, you know, and uh, ignore my work. Yeah, and swim no, in the sea and all I, that kind I of stuff. I use my uh, my mm. like, leisure time to do uh, interesting things with members of my family. Yeah, right. Unlike yeah. you, you use your leather leisure time to go down to Stamford Bridge and watch your team getting slaughtered five yes. nil yes. by Chelsea. Yes. Let's talk to Steve Nichol, who probably had a much happier weekend. Yeah, Former Liverpool player, of course, top of the league. Steve, long time no speak. Hello, boys. How are you? Very well. Steve. Very well, thank Very you. Very well. Now, it's unfortunate that this particular conversation should take place after mm. such contrasting fortunes from uh, Liverpool and Everton's uh, point of view at the weekend. Yeah, I'm really gutted. I wish it'd been the other <laughs> way around. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who, no who, laughing, please, Steve. Who invited you on this show, Steve? Huh? Well, it clearly wasn't you. No, it certainly wasn't me. You're absolutely right. I have to say, uh, in all fairness, Liverpool looked very impressive. And I thought they looked like a a team who are enjoying their football to the extent that, you know, they believe themselves to be rather invincible. They go on the pitch knowing they're going to win, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it's a a great place to be when you just step on the field and you can't wait for it to start. Yeah. Um, You know, it's it's really about two things. Number one, it's about working hard. But the second Mm. one, and probably the most important one, is that actually you can see that they're enjoying what they're doing and, when you've got those two things put together, yeah, that this is what you get. I mean, Liverpool going forward have got some great technical players, sure, um, and and along with hard work uh, and enjoying it. I mean, it's just at the moment it's it's an unbeatable force. But it's taken a while to work out that they've got some very very talented players going forward, hasn't it? Because it hasn't always, you know. I mean, they've been there quite a few of them a long time, and they haven't been playing like this. No, but things things take time to 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 gel together, and and you know the mental side of the game as well is huge. And and when you're stepping on a field, and all of a sudden you trust the guy standing next to you a hundred percent, and you can't wait to work for him. I mean, that's that that was the ethos that Liverpool initially was built on. It was about the team. It wasn't about any individual, uh, and it was about somebody being there to pick up the slack when somebody has an off day. Well, this is what you're seeing now. Every single player in a red jersey now isn't playing for himself. He's playing for the guy standing next to him. And that's, I mean, that's half the battle. And is that all down to Jurgen Klopp, do you think? Absolutely. Mm. No question. Mm. Mm. 100%. You mm. know, it's, it, it's down to Klopp, uh, but it's also down to the players that he's picked uh, the mentality of them and, and the chemistry has to be right as well. You know, there's a lot of things going to the type of football that you're seeing from Liverpool. It's not just a case of oh, all of a sudden it happens. There's all little pieces of the puzzle get built up and put together. And then when you get the right ones, you get the right chemistry, you get the right mentality, you get everybody pushing in the right direction, the same direction, then great things happen. And that's, that's what Liverpool are doing. Because this is... I don't care who you support. If you like football, you like watching Liverpool. Well, I have to say... It's, of course he doesn't. Well, no, I don't. Of course I don't, because, <laughs> you know, the difference between my team at the weekend and yours is 11 goals uh, to the oh. negative for Everton. And it was, it was a, you know, it was a shocking uh, thing to have to witness the Everton defeat, although I think it was a one-off, to be honest. I think Chelsea just did extremely well on the day. The answer... So, sorry, the question now to be asked, Steve, is can Liverpool keep it up till the end of the season? Because there have been some false dawns on Liverpool's, um, you know, desperate attempt to yep. snatch their first Premier League title. I, I think they can. Uh, mm-hmm. I think they, they obviously have to get lucky with the usual nonsense with suspensions and injuries and all that other stuff that that, that you just you can't see coming. Um, but the fact that they're not in Europe is, is absolutely huge. You know, the the tempo they play at yep. means that that they have to be ready and fit and healthy and strong and rested. And, that, and that's what will happen. Mm. And, and quite frankly, the, the one thing I do love as well about Klopp, mm. 
You like what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's put in front of him. Mm. He goes out and plays the same way because he knows that this is the way to win, and he knows this is the way he wants his team to play. Yeah. And his team, his team want to play that way. So, you know, I, I hate all this nonsense that, that that we hear coaches saying. Well, we're playing this team this week, so we're mm. going to change this formation. We're going to do that. Let me tell you something. After coaching, it's hard enough to get players to be able to do one thing to a high a high standard yeah. without chopping and changing every week. So, you know, he does that week in and week out. He appears to have a very calming kind of personality as well, I think. You know, he's, he's brilliant after games when he's talking to uh, to people who are interviewing him. He seems to have, have, have absolutely kind of been accepted by, by the Liverpool fans very very easily. He, he, he very sort of smartly got that, got that business of getting the team up in front of the cop, you know, when they played at the end of the game to, to show their appreciation. I mean, he's played a blinder, this guy, hasn't he? Yeah, well, he he kind of he kind of says it how he sees it, and and you know, foot, again, football players, and I was one, and and I loved a manager who was straight with me. You mm. know, if I had a good game, then you know what, people like Kenny were the first to come up to you and put their finger in your face and tell you, mm-hmm. and and you actually respect it and and admire it, and of course, when you do well, you see him going around hugging everybody, mm. so. You know where you stand with this guy, and every single person knows where they stand. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the other thing he's done is he's captured the um, the crowd, hasn't he? I mean, it's not. It's I just not... said that. Sorry, I just said yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But sorry, and what I was going to say is that didn't start well because you remember early on in his reign at Liverpool, he did that ridiculous dive, didn't he? Took all his players down the cop yeah. end and let's well, all that's dive. What I was just all... talking about. Yeah, I know. But what I'm saying is to get back from that now and be where he is. But that wasn't ridiculous. It was a great thing to do. No, it, it wasn't. Worked. No, it wasn't. It was ridiculous well, it because they... it bonded the players with the with the fans. No, it made them it look bonded... silly. No, it made didn't... them look silly. No, only to you. No, no, it made them look what silly because think? they hadn't achieved anything that night. Steve, Steve. Do, you, do you think it made them look silly? I don't. Yeah, I do actually. I'm, yeah, thank I'm you. Sorry, I'm going to have to agree with Mike. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> there we go. I'm sorry. I was I was actually quite embarrassed. Yeah, exactly. Well, 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 well now, but yeah, but it worked though. That was the beginning of 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 the the bonding well, between the, the fans no, and the players wasn't. and him. It wasn't. I'm not. I, I'm not quite sure of that one, mm. but um, but he hasn't done it again. Yeah. Uh, so exactly. clearly, he wasn't that keen on it. He certainly didn't. In my opinion, I'm sure he thought, you mm. know what, maybe he shouldn't have done that. Because every not not you can't get everything right. Yeah. And, no, and, no, you can't. Sure. I agree. I agree. And he had to try. And, quite... he, and he hasn't done it again. So yeah. so he's actually learned from 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 a mistake. Yes, that's right. Well, that's one way of looking at it. But yeah. what about Everton's performance? And what about Chelsea? Because Chelsea looked oh. pretty good at the weekend as well. They did. Yeah, Chelsea were good as well. Uh, again, to me, Conte seems a similar type to Klopp. You know, there's no mm. nonsense. You know mm. where you stand. Mm. Um, tremendous enthusiasm. They both have tremendous enthusiasm, yeah. don't they, for for their craft? And yeah. do you know sometimes I, you know, Ronald Koeman is reserved. You know what I mean? He's he's not uh, he's not like the, the you know the big smiling Klopp or the or the dancing on the touchline uh, Conte. And I contrast that Steve with the days of Harry Catrick and Bill Shankly. Uh, you know, Bill Shankly was a, a, a wild eccentric who, who, who stimulated the, old, the, the, the crowd and, and Catrick was more reserved. Sometimes I think the wild eccentrics get more out of the players because they stimulate the crowd. Well, I think, again, you need, you need a combination of things. If, if you have that, yep. that wild eccentric manager, you, you better have good players. Uh, because otherwise you're going to look a little bit foolish. Yeah. Uh, and Conte's got good players. Uh, Everton, on the other hand, whether Koeman was, you know, like like Conte or Klopp, mm. it, it wouldn't work because at the moment Everton is, I mean, Everton are sitting sixth in the table, which mm-hmm. is the amazing thing. Seventh, yeah, seventh we seventh. are now. Yeah, that's right. But, yeah. but but really, there's a there's a there's a lot of questions need answered there, and I think I think the biggest one, uh, well, one of them is is defensively. Mm. I mean, you talk about having no pace, and when you're playing against people like Hazard, mm. who who whose first couple of steps are incredible, then, yeah. then you're going to struggle. But, of course, going forward, who's scoring goals for them? Yeah. You know, if Lukaku doesn't score, then where else are they coming from? Well, they should come from people like Barkley, because I think I'm right in saying that uh, all but three of Liverpool's goals have been scored by midfielders, haven't they? 
I think well, they have. What you mean you, uh, overall? You, yes. You've got to remember. Yes. Say, you've got to remember Liverpool don't play with a proper centre forward. So well, that's everybody's right. Everybody's an attacking midfielder these days. That's so. right. Yeah. But also, I mean, like in the game yesterday mm. um, against Watford, where mm. you got uh, you know Sturridge hitting bars and posts and other that's people right. scoring the rebounds. Yeah. I mean, that's not really a fair representation of who's scoring the goals, is it, Steve? Well, it's one of those. It's one of those things you can you can turn stats into whatever you want. Yeah, to look exactly. Like, but, but the point is, if you don't have a centre forward, a proper centre forward on the field, mm. and they're all attacking midfielders, then you can use the stat that it's midfielders sure. who score. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the funny thing about the season again so far is that it's going to be, you know, throwing up all these kind of very odd results. Like Manchester City, um, and Liverpool, and Arsenal all went into the weekend uh, top, joint top, and now suddenly Liverpool have emerged at the top because City got a draw with Middlesbrough uh, and the North London derby. I suppose you might have expected ended in a draw as well. Mm. But I mean, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't, have, you would have put your house on City beating Middlesbrough, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would, but, you know, the, to me, that was one of those games. I mean, Manchester City were guilty of not getting a second goal. Mm. And teams like Middlesbrough um, and teams like Hull, you know, the teams that, are, that know they're going to be scrapping around the bottom, they have to hold on to anything they can get. And, mm. and to be only 1-0 down going into the last 10, 5 minutes of a game then they're always going to think that they just might get that one chance. And yeah. on this occasion, Middlesbrough, they had one chance. It was a fantastic cross from Friend, and it was an even better header at the far post. So sometimes that just happens. Yeah, mm. absolutely right. Well, listen, Steve, uh, delighted to talk to you again. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk yep. to us. We'll talk to you. Don't leave it so long next time, hopefully, uh, as Liverpool uh, march on, I suppose you might say. Uh, we've got loads more coming up in the next hour, including Sandra Manetti, who's going to be reporting, reporting in from Hollywood on the, the latest Trump Clinton scenario. Indeed. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out, as usual, of course, later on this morning. Uh, how about this from Jude? She says, great to hear Steve Nicholl on the wireless mm-hmm. with the mm-hmm. two mics. Why are there so few Scottish players in the Premier League? Well, I think, I guess because we know the answer they're not very that. good. Eh? They're not very good. Well, I think that's the problem. I mean, Scottish football has been in decline, you'd uh, have to say, wouldn't yeah. you? I think these, the reason there's so little debate about the England-Scotland game that's taking place on Friday mm. and is live on this channel, right... Is uh, isn't it? I believe so. Yeah, <laughs> of course it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I hope yeah. so. Well, of course now that you've it, said is. it is. We know it is. We yeah. know it is. I know these things. You know? Right. Okay. I keep in touch with. Scotland things, are playing so. in pink. You know. I know they're playing in pink. Yeah. But um, the reason why there's not been you know a huge amount of debate. I mean, you'd have thought like the Sunday papers might have alerted themselves to the fact that there's no um, great football in the Premier League next uh, next week. So right. why don't we talk about um, England Scotland? Is because most people think it's going to be a very ineffectual game, i.e. Well, people just don't think Scotland are going to be up uh, well, good, good enough to get a, get any kind of a decent game against England. I hope they do. Well, I, I hope, I they, hope do. they do, but I can't see how they can. Mm. Because to start off with... Scott Brown should be back, though, shouldn't he, that we're hearing? Who? Scott Brown, the captain. OK, is that going to make a huge difference? Well, he's very, very tenacious. He's their kind of heart and soul of the team. And, and who does so he play for? He plays for Scotland. Yeah, I know. but He it... plays for Celtic. Yeah, yeah, I know, but what I'm saying well, what is... Who does he... Well, if you know, why do you ask who he plays for? Because the point I'm trying to make to you and to our millions of listeners mm. is there isn't one significant Scottish player in the Premier League anymore in England. Well, that was the point Jude was making. Yes. Why are there so few Scottish players in it... the Premier League? Exactly, exactly. There aren't any because they're not very good. And, um, and I feel sorry for Scotland because they've had a dirt of talent coming through over the years. I mean, in, you know, years ago when England played Scotland at Wembley or, or at Hamden Park, quite often the um, captain of England and the captain of Scotland may be playing for the same Premier League team like Liverpool or yep. something like that. You know That's what right. I mean? Well, also, you know, in, yeah. in, in, when you see the uh, sort of the trail trailers that are going out on TV for yeah. the game mm. and they're showing some of the classic moments from previous you That's know, right. clashes yeah. uh, when, when things were really tough. Yes. You, it makes you want to see that kind of game, but you I'm, know you're not really going to. Just, uh, just think back to Scottish teams of the past. Hanson, Dalgleish. Yeah. Um, uh, Is that it? No, 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 no. Billy Bremner. But well, go further back to Dennis Law. Yeah, and uh, you know, and to uh, Jinxy Jim. Um, Jinxy Jim, you mean Jimmy Johnson? <laughs> no, no, no. Jinxy Jim, who played for Sunderland, who um, who had two liver <laughs> transplants because he had a what slight, your own slight own... problem with the bottle as well. What about your very own mm. Duncan Ferguson? Yeah, Duncan. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, these these were great players. Mm. But what I'm saying is, you know, in the days when Graeme Souness, Eddie yeah. McCready, do you remember him? 
Well, yeah, but that was a long time ago. He was left winger for Chelsea. Well, how much longer ago was it than the guy you just mentioned, Jinxy Jim? Jinxy Jim. When was he? Uh, what's his name, by the way? Well, I don't know. He, you know, he played for I Sunderland. Don't know. Um, he, he's more famous for having two liver transplants than for his, his playing ability. Really? Jim, uh, everybody knows who he was. He was a great Scottish player. And uh, Sunderland yeah, I mean, bought Jim him. Jim Wallace. No, no, it wasn't Jim Wallace. No, no, no. It was Jim... Uh... Jim Baxter was great as well. Was it Jim Baxter? No, it wasn't Jim Baxter. No, but either. Jim Baxter was a great player. Jim Baxter was a great player, yeah. Oh, look, Scotland have had millions of Ronnie great Ronnie Simpson, the goalkeeper. Ronnie Simpson. Play, got his first well, cap. I mean, at... Don't forget, in those days, that was when Celtic were the champions of Europe. Hang on, he got his first cap at the age of 38. How John about Gregg that? from Rangers. John Gregg was the Rangers captain. He lifted the uh, European Cup in his cup, mm. uh, which many people forget because, of course, it wasn't as good a trophy as the European Cup. But what I'm saying is... The players who, who turn out for Scotland on um, Friday nights at Wembley will be largely unknown to the English audience because most of them play in Scotland. And apart from Celtic, Scotland haven't really got any very good football teams, have they? Uh, not really. Because even Rangers, you know, who are the second mighty power in mm. Scotland, are still rebuilding and finding their feet in the Scottish Premier League. Very true. You know what I mean? Absolutely right. They're not now, even second to Celtic, now, third. Now, Scott has helpfully sent a great picture in, which is so yep. far the picture of the He says, attached for Porky, a uh, picture of Alex James's swimming pool on his farm. <laughs> Alex James? Yeah, Alex James, the guy from Blur. Oh, I see. You said there's no evidence of him swimming. Well, how do you know he's in that pool? He's not in that pool. Well, That's a picture of a, a woman in that pool. He's got a swimming pool. Yeah, so maybe he just paddles around in the, in the uh, oh, shallow so, end. So you think he studiously avoids uh, getting his hair wet? Is that well, what you well, say? Well, he said he has not washed his hair for ten years. He has I not believe used it. commercial shampoo. I don't shampoo. think he's a liar. He has not used commercial shampoo. Where did you get this line about he's not used commercial shampoo? Where have you read it, that from? That's what it means. That's what it I've It doesn't mean informed. that at all. Yes, it does. It doesn't mean that at all. I don't all. know why you can't just accept that you are um, misinterpreting his comments. And by the way, my knowledge is so vast that when you said Alex <laughs> James, right... You called him Alex Blur a minute ago. No, no. When you said Alex James, yeah. Alex James was a famous, legendary Arsenal and Scottish footballer... Was he? ...who was famous... Well, did he have a swimming pool? No, he didn't have a swimming pool, but he had the biggest shorts in football. Biggest shorts? He had big white baggy shorts really? when he played for Arsenal. He was known for them. Well, didn't everybody have them in those days? No, no, his were bigger than most, honestly. It's 14 apiece, by the way, Seattle against the Buffalo Bills now. Oh, thank God you There's told me that. Thanks a, a lot. I was game. getting stressed out not knowing how it was going. Mm. Mm. Now, I want to tell you something which is amazing. Yeah, go on. There is no such thing as coincidence. What? No such thing as coincidence. How do you mean? Um, a new book I've got <laughs> called Fluke... <laughs> What are you laughing at? What's well, your problem? Because I can't... I can just see where this it's is going. It's called Fluke. Did you listen to Clips of the Week, by the way, this week? No. They had the Fish Finger Pyramid conversation, which I have to say... Oh, yeah. Uh, ...was much funnier than I remember it at the time. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I can't remember they it. They yeah. said it was... Uh, it would have done Abbott and Costello proud. Really? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, a couple of clowns, weren't they? Uh, so this book, Fluke, right? Yeah. Uh, the Math and Myth of coinf- uh, Coincidence... Math and Myth? Ma- math and Myth. Well, you, for you to say. It's the Math and Myth of Coincidence. <laughs> and it argues that chance happens happenings can be calculated and the odds aren't always as high as you'd think. Right. So the birthday problem, right? What? As, as it's known amongst mathematicians, right? What, what is the birthday problem? I'm going to explain it to you. It's easy explained. Go and on. this book was written by uh, this American guy called Mazua. Mazua? Mazua, yeah, not the guy well, who's... He's only got one name, like Madonna. Uh, no, Joseph Mazua. OK. Joseph Mazua, right. who is a mathematical genius. Is he? And he says the birthday problem, as it's known among mathematicians, is easily explained. So in a group of 366 people, mm. right, Yeah. there's 100% probability that two will have the same birthday because of the number of days in a year. No kidding? Mm-hmm. Really? How yep. surprising is that? Yep. Well, that's obvious, isn't it? Right, How now, is that a birthday problem? No, hang on, hang on, excuse me. Now, conversely, with just two people, the chances of them not sharing a birthday is 99.7%. OK? What? You got that? No. Conversely, so, no, run, that's the opposite too. Run that by me again. So it, right. the, the likelihood of them having the same birthday yes. is what? In a group of 366 people, yeah. there's a 100% probability that two will have the same birthday because of yes. the number of days in a year. Yes, Conversely... So, so that's a certainty, in other words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Conversely, with just two people, mm. that's not 366, that's two, right. that's you and me, right? right? Yeah. Sh- the chances of us sharing a birthday yeah. is... Uh, not sharing a birthday, not sharing a birthday, is 99.7%, OK? Unless you're in a room with people who all got the same birthday. Well, you're being ridiculous well, now. No, but- I'm not. No, this is why there's two whole, strangers. The two strangers. The statistical um, mm. sort of analysis yeah, of almost yeah, everything yeah. is a nonsense in many ways. Right now, with three people, yeah. the odds fall 
just barely to 99.18%. But at 15 people, it's down to 74.7. 23 people in the room to get better than even odds that two of them were born on the same day. For other random tests, the probability of achieving the unlikely can take much longer, OK? Well, this is all fairly obvious stuff, isn't it's it? It's not. Yeah, no, it is. No. So the more people who are in a room, the bigger the likelihood is that two of them will share a birthday. Really? Yeah, hold the front page. Um, in 1931, yeah. right, because this is where the research emanated, the mathematician Emile Borel, OK, yeah. asked whether a number of random events could amount to something meaningful. The question morphed into, could a monkey... Randomly hitting the keys of a keyboard, type out a Shakespearean sonnet. Yeah, do you believe that? The answer is yes. Well, it's not. The answer is, it, is yes. It's plainly not. There the, will never be a time when a monkey hammers out Shakespeare, ever. The, the answer is yes, but the probability, yes. the probability of a monkey typing the word shall, as in, shall I compare thee to a summer's day... Shall I get my coat? Shall I, <laughs> shall I? Shall I have another drink? <laughs> the uh, the probability of a monkey typing the word "shall" is one in twelve million. The more it types, it's, well, actually, it's not because it's never going to happen. Is. It is. No, it's never going to happen. The more it types, the better its chances. So, with eight point two million tries, it has a better than even probability of typing "shall." So okay. with eight, so in eight point two million tries, yes. a monkey might type yes. one word. Yes, in English. Yes, that's which right. makes sense. That's right. So, what are the odds of it then doing that uh, in a way which is actually uh, meaningful and uh, would would replicate Shakespeare? It's never going to happen. Well, it depends how long. Uh, it depends well, no, it how doesn't. long you let the monkey uh, bash on the keys of um, a typewriter. No, because the whole point of Shakespeare, no. or any prose, or anything which is in any way in order, is that mm. you can't just. Expect to produce it at random. You can't. Yeah. Well, I mean, you couldn't produce it at random. Never mind a monkey. Well, the, no, but you see, see the time. By the way, the time. Don't worry about the time. The time. The ti- time. Well, I is, do worry about the time. Time is of the essence. Time is always your savior. When you're losing the argument, you I'm always not you always sort of invent a, a you know a I'm time not crisis. An argument. I'm pointing time out crisis, the absolute yeah. and utter idiocy of this particular no, piece of not, research that not. you've highlighted. It's not. It's not. I'm going to tell you about the Scotland squad coming up in a bit as well. Okay. Because uh, I've got it in front of me. This is Talk Sport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk. Please, please me. Got to the n- number one in the charts. Oh, did it? Mm. Mm. Well, funnily enough. That was um, the Beatles' first LP. Yes, I know, because I actually downloaded it, funnily enough, uh, last year, I think it was. Why? There, was a, there was a great documentary on about the making of Please, Please Me, oh, I think, yeah. uh, which I watched on oh, uh, BBC okay. Four. Right. And I was so taken by it that yes. I thought, I want to have the whole album now, because okay. I don't think I'd ever owned it. Oh, I see. So now I have, and it's great. Excellent. A lot Good. of the songs on it, of course, aren't theirs. A lot of the songs were covered, you're absolutely right. Like a Taste of Honey, for example. Yeah. A Taste of Honey. I thought you weren't going to sing. A Taste of Honey. All right, should we play some more of my karaoke now? It tastes much sweeter than white. No, I want to tell you a story about Please Please Me, right? Mm. This was the start of the Beatles phenomenon. So this is released, Please Please Me. Mm. That famous picture of them on a balcony looking down, which, yeah. you know what I mean? You've seen that and all which that. Which they replicated of... later, didn't they, for the uh, the Red and the Blue album? They did, absolutely, for the uh, Beatles' greatest. You've told me who took that picture. I've forgotten who it is. Um, it was somebody we knew, wasn't it? Oh, was it? Or somebody that was sort of quite a famous photographer. Yeah, it was. Because it was done very much in a hurry. Was it David Bailey or somebody like that? I'm not sure if it was Bailey, but it was it was somebody who um, didn't yeah. have much time and yeah, suddenly right. ran into yeah. the building, that's saw right. them, and, said, and he, thought, that's the picture. Look down here, fellas, and bang, that's yeah. it, yeah. And um, the, the, that LP stayed at the top for 30 weeks. Did it? And then guess what displaced it? Uh, I don't know, something about the Rolling Stones? No, the Beatles' second album oh, with, really? the, with the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, those are the days. Yeah, exactly, I you guess. know, when it was just continuous uh, sort of Beatles. I saw that you tweeted out something from Paul McCartney's uh, Twitter account over the weekend where That's he right. said something like he almost, they, they were playing a concert somewhere mm. and they almost, he almost thought about giving it all up. Yeah. Do you remember that? No. You tweeted it out over the weekend. Well, whenever I see a Paul McCartney tweet, I retweet it. Well, so would it help it's... if you remembered what you'd actually tweeted out? Yeah, he did say something like that. Do you know what you I found? You also tweeted out something by Sheila Ferguson. Yes, I did. A yes. picture of her uh, and uh, the, the uh, Marigold Hotel TV series. Uh, was it that, or was it uh, her uh, in a dress rehearsal for her um, Christmas party? No, pantomime? she said. She, I'm pretty sure it said something about because she started. In, she started into, into playing with me. That's right. Because I said it mm. looks like Porky Parry's already moved in mm. because there was mm. a picture of her standing next to Bill Oddy. All oh, right. Okay. Right. That was quite witty. That. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. But um, she then started. She then started tweeting me. Yes. Sheila Ferguson. Yeah. So That's I think excellent. If you do go and watch her in this pantomime, yes. she'd probably like it if I came along. Well, maybe she would, yeah. I'll go and. Uh... Although it's in Ipswich, by the way, not Colchester. 
Eh? You said it was in Colchester. It was. No, it's in Ipswich. No, the rehearsals are taking place in Colchester, the theatre in Colchester. Oh, what, are you going to no. go to the rehearsals? Sorry? Are you going to go to the rehearsals? No, 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 no. But the Panto's in Ipswich. I know it's in Ipswich. Well, why would they be rehearsing in Colchester? Because, I don't know, they just did because there wasn't time to uh, rehearse in Ipswich because really? there, there was another production on there. Oh, you know, right? you have to rehearse these things. You can't uh-huh. rehearse them in the theatre where it's taking place. Why not? Because something else is going on at uh-huh. the time. That's uh-huh. why, you idiot. Okay. Can't move the set well, around. Well, to be objectionable. Um, now, let me tell you about the Scottish squad. Oh, yeah? Because you okay. said they don't have any people from the Premier League. Okay. Well, they do. Yeah, go on. Uh, they have one goalkeeper from Hull, Marshall, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, they also have uh, somebody from... Is he see, first choice at Hull? Fletcher from West Brom. I was going to say, he's... he's, he's uh, Marshall, yeah, I think so. You think he is, yeah. Well, Darren Fletcher's their captain, of course. MacArthur from Crystal Palace. Yes, that's right. Uh, you've got Snodgrass from Hull. Yes. Morrison from West Brom. Yes. Um, and uh, that's it. So you've yeah. got about four or five from yeah. the Premier League. Yeah, no, OK. I, uh, Bizarrely, I, they've I got somebody from Leipzig. Burke from Leipzig. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What's his name? Burke. B-U-R-K-E, as in Burke and Hare. Oh, that's his first name or his second name? Well, of course it's his second name. Second, what's his first Who's name? Who's got his first name? I don't know what his first name is. He plays for Leipzig. Oh, so you just sort of pick I'm this looking, out randomly. Well, no, I'm looking at a, a list of surnames in the squad, hmm. OK? OK. I don't know what Burke's name is, but OK. How many people do you know called Burke as a first name? Well, only only one you've named. Um, well, that's not his first Burke name. Burke and Hare. You know when they what's got... What's Burke and Hare? What, who are they? Who was it? <laughs> I thought you said it was Burke and Hare. No! Burke and Hare are two men. That's what I'm saying. Who are surnamed Burke and Hare. Yes, I know that. Well, you just said the one that you knew who had a first name Burke was Burke and Hare. No, Burke of Burke and Hare. <laughs> That's what I meant. Not Burke and Hare. Um, I didn't say Burke and Hare. I read the book on them and uh, it was quite horrifying the way they snatched these bodies. Well, it's not very pleasant what they did. Well, what they did is, I mean, it was in Edinburgh, wasn't it? Yeah. And they used to go down to all these wine joints, uh, no, the gin joints as it was in those yeah. days. Gin was cheap. With all the gin joints in all the world. A lot of gin joints. And, all, and then they find some sort of daft boy who'd come in from the country, you know what I mean, for a bit of excitement with the bright lights of uh-huh. Edinburgh and all that. And they would literally ply him with treat gin and then they would follow him down the alleyway and they'd knock him out and smother him. Yeah. And he was a dead body then. And then they'd take him round to the uh, local... Well, it started off as body snatching, didn't it? But That's then they I mean. needed more bodies. They needed more bodies. They'd, they'd get off then to the, get him round to the medical school and, uh, and there was a body. But you're mm. absolutely right. He used to dig the bodies up to start off with. But um, either Burke or Hare came to a very, very bad end. When he got out of jail, he mm. was thrown into a pit of lime and it burnt all the mm. flesh off his, uh, off his uh, body. body and he was, gass- he, he was uh, horribly disfigured for the rest of his life and blinded and everything, you know what I mean? Not a good way to go. No. Mm. Uh, Max says, have England got a better midfielder than Barry the Magic Man Bannon? Barry Bannon. Well, they have got some quite decent midfielders. Yeah, we have, yeah, Barry uh, Bannon. Woodenhead says this, uh, if they have forever, they type every combination of letters imaginable mm. an infinite number of mm. times. Mm. Talking about monkeys and yeah. typewriters. Yeah, sure, sure. Which means that they wouldn't actually necessarily produce anything which would be in any way, um, you know, readable. Well, it would eventually. It's the same well, as no, my theory eventually. about throwing a ball at a wall. Eventually, yeah, it'll go through the wall rubbish. because of the uh, no, the combination a, of the molecules. That's also rubbish. What I find is interesting, by the way. Look tomorrow morning's papers, mm. and of course, a lot of it's previewing the American election and all that. But uh, somebody's managed to come up with a, a, a page of stuff to prove that Gordon Strachan is, yeah. in fact, a very funny wee man. You well, know, I think he is a very funny man. Who likes a laugh and, yeah, you know... Th- well, Strachan is a funny guy. Is, is, the, is the heart and soul of any party. The trouble is that a mm. lot of Scotland fans don't think he's much of a manager. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, suppose. Smoggy Ozzy says this. Mm. What about the mm. fact that both managers of England and Scotland were both managers for Middlesbrough mm. and both were crap? I didn't remember Gordon Strachan being manager of Middlesbrough. Yeah, of course he was. Was he? Yeah. I, I remember, uh, remember uh, Southgate was. Well, no, Do you mean Pep Southgate? Uh, Pep Southgate. Pep that's Southgate, it, yeah. the yeah. man who now sort of strokes his chin. He takes mm. that approach to football now, doesn't he? Well, what I, you know, every, I, I see Henry Winter, um, you know, a very esteemed writer, is saying even if um, England lose to Scotland, Southgate must get the job. In fact, I've only read the headlines. So I don't know how he justifies that, but I'm sure he, he does. He's an expert. Uh-huh. But... The point is, Southgate now looks so earnest, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's like, um, it's like he's taken on the mantle now of, uh, you know, how serious uh, Well, it's like football life philosopher, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. You've all philosophy. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's why we call him Pep Southgate. That's right. Now. And earnestly looking into the camera and, you know, describing, you know, well, Jack Wilshire, of course, you know, he started three times now. But isn't this for the... Bournemouth and had 90 yeah. minutes with them and he's got a fantastic skill level and all this going... You know, why don't you just it's say, yeah, I'm going to give Jack a chance. But yeah. isn't it just total blocks? It tells you how... Yeah. 
far the whole kind of thing has fallen yes. in the national game as yes. far as England are concerned. Yes, because, that's right. you know, as, as that uh, texter just said, mm. you know, he wasn't a very good manager at Middlesbrough. No, he wasn't. You know, he was an OK player, but the idea that he's now taken on this kind of, you know, serious, uh, very, yeah, no. very, you know, interesting yeah. demeanour, very thoughtful, that's right. you know, very studious. Yes. You know, people forget that he actually wasn't much good when he was a manager. No, that's absolutely true. You know, he uh, he lost his job at Middlesbrough because he, he, he couldn't uh, make them play. Mm. Um, and then he's, you know, he's he's done all sorts of sort of um, side jobs, for want of a better word, since, you know, in sort of international arena coaching the under-21s and 23s and all yeah. that kind of stuff. How about this one uh, from, uh, yeah. from Ellie, who says, why yeah. do people think England will beat Scotland easy? We've been mm. poor so mm. far. We only got two goals against the mighty Malta. Yeah, no, I agree with that. But mm. I, I think that, you know, with the... What am I talking about? The emotion of the occasion, all that kind of stuff. I think I think England will be carried by the swell. And I, I, I don't think they'll win by more than about... Two maybe. Well, I, I wouldn't be. I mean, yeah. I'm 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 going to be plumbing for Scotland, as yes. you might expect, right? So I'm yes. going to be supporting them in the game, and I'm hoping that they'll yes. put up a good enough performance to at least, um, you know, get a goal. Yes. And if they could get a goal at Wembley, I mean, England aren't that great, mm. you know, so they might get a draw. That would be my suggestion. You think that England Scotland might be a draw? It might be, yeah. Mm. If Scotland can turn, are you, are you, is that going to be your prediction for the game? Well, at the moment, that's what I'm thinking. Mm. You know, I haven't seen the teams yet, but you know that well, might change. That's very bold, actually. Uh, how about some of these names that weren't mentioned? Tony says yes. uh, some Scots players you've never mentioned: Kenny Burns, Archie Gemmell, Steve Archibald, Lou Macari, and Joe Jordan. Now, Joe Jordan was yeah. a terrifying prospect, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he uh, lost his teeth once in a bus stop. Well, uh, he played a... without them for years, didn't he? Yeah, but he. Uh... The way he lo- didn't he get them knocked out in a game? He got them knocked out in a game when Laurie McMenny was his manager. It must, mm. So it must have been at Southampton. Uh-huh. And I remember Laurie came out of the dressing room and you know to talk to um, you know a radio interviewer or something. And he said, uh, "Don't go in that dressing room." He said, "There's blood everywhere. It's like Dracula's just visited." Oh God! And it was because Joe Jordan's two front teeth had been knocked out. Yeah, okay. Um, the the rest of those players in 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 that list that yeah. you've just mentioned. Were average Scottish players. Oh no, Steve Archibald was a good player. And very, so was yeah, was, yeah, yeah, and so I agree. Was Archie I, no, I agree. I agree. They were all good players, but they weren't great Scottish what players. What about Archie Gemmell's goal against um, uh, Holland. Holland? Yeah, I mean, one of the great World Cup goals. Wasn't yeah, it, it was actually, but it was forlorn because it didn't make any difference. Doesn't Scotland matter. still went out. Doesn't matter. It was still a great goal. But now, how about this from uh, yeah. uh, somebody who's given this a lot of thought? Actually, mm, mm. Um, where is it? No, it's gone now. Never mind, I'll find it yeah. in a minute. What was that then? Oh, here we go, yeah, from Richard. Uh, what if there's 366 people in a room on a leap year? <laughs> well, well, 366 is a leap year, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Therefore, the chances of what their birthdays might be would be different, wouldn't they? No. Yeah, they would. It's one every day. No, but you said the chances of them having the same birthday. Yes. Were a hundred percent. Yes, two of them. That's right. Whereas in three hundred sixty-six in a leap mm. year, mm. that would be different, wouldn't it? It would be ninety-nine point nine seven percent. How do you figure that? Because I do. I've got a mathematical brain. What are you saying that they couldn't all have different birthdays? Which makes it uh, almost a certainty. Yeah, but are you saying they couldn't have different birthdays? Uh, I'm not saying they couldn't. I'm saying the probability chance factor mm. is overwhelmingly in favour of there being two people in that room with the same birthday. Okay. Well, um, well, what about with with 365 in a normal year? Um, yeah. There's a probability of that as well. I mean, there's a probability mm. of all having this, a different mm. date, but mm. a different birthday mm. throughout the course of the year. Yes, is actually very slim. Exactly, that's exactly. So really it's not exactly. coincidence, you see. And I keep telling you all this. But now here's one from uh, we'll Andy. He says, Jinky, John- "Jinky Johnson went to Sunderland when he left Celtic." So uh, we're talking about Jimmy Johnson. No, no, I'm not talking about Jimmy Johnson. Honestly, I'm talking about. I wish I could remember the name. Well, you of said the guy. guy played for Sunderland. Yeah, he did play for Sunderland, and, and, and everybody little, knows who he is. He was, was one. Was he a little winger? No, he was a midfield player, and he's one of the greatest British footballers of all time, but unfortunately he had a drink problem. And, and unfortunately uh, you can't remember his name. And that slowed him down a bit. No, well, I will remember his name in a minute. All right. In fact, I'll look him up, and uh, and then we'll all know. OK, okay? good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, this is, of course, Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Coming up next, we're going to Hollywood to speak to our man Sandra Minetti to find out what the latest is on Trump Clinton. Woo-hoo! Out the G-Fox, on juice and gin. Just me and a friend. We are the two mics. Uh, here's one from Tony who says, Shall I compare thee to a summer's day or get me coat? A monkey's got a better chance of making sense than Porky. 
Yeah, that's very nice, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. People uh, don't sometimes appreciate it. Here's a text from Sid the Macum. He says, you're, my conf- you're confusing Jinky Jimmy Smith, yes. who played for Newcastle, yes. with Jim Baxter, Slim Jim, yeah, that's who absolutely played for right. Sunderland. You're absolutely right. So you're thinking of Jim Baxter? Uh, I'm thinking of Jim Baxter. He but was a sublime footballer. Well, he was, yeah, and they called him uh, Jinxy Jim as well, to be honest. I know Are that you sure? from Yeah, I know that from Taunton Sunderland fans. But Jinxy Jim Smith, the Newcastle uh, forward, mm. I remember him as well. Right. Absolutely right. So that's unusual that two players yeah, from two that's... teams in the North East were both called... Jinxy Jim. Yes, it is, but I mean... I don't think that's right. No, it is right, because one would have nicked the, um, you know, the sort of nom de plume from the other, you know what I mean? Is that right? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Something they say up there a lot, is it? Yeah, it is. Nom de plume. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, uh, we're going. Uh, uh, we're going over to uh, Hollywood now because, good. of course, we are only hours away from mm. the kickoff of what can only be described as the biggest election in the history of the United States of America. Yes, and we're going to talk to Sandro Manetti, our man in Hollywood, uh, to find out how it's all going. Sandro, very good morning to you. Well, good morning to you, and let me tell you, if only Hollywood celebrities were allowed to vote, then Hillary Clinton would win in a landslide. Well, she's got just about everybody in her corner from the A-list. She's got them all, yeah. I saw Stevie Wonder on the TV a few hours ago. I saw Katy Perry. I've seen uh, 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 the the, the Kanye West scenario. Uh, We've seen Jay-Z, Beyonce. Uh, Donald Trump, of course, says he doesn't need any of them, and, and he's been slagging them all off, hasn't he? Yes, he has. And in typical style, uh, he's been saying most of them are on the on, on the wane. Uh, I don't know quite who he's referring to, but uh, yes, he's just he's got all the a list. But even though Trump has been slagging off the celebrity support and saying it makes no difference, uh, he has got some celebrities in his corner. Mm. Um, he's 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 got Mike Tyson. Uh, he's got Gary Busey. Mm. He's got Gary Charlie Busey, who famously Sheen. fell off his motorbike and, uh, and hit his head without wearing a crash helmet. Exactly. So yeah. it's good that he's got a nice balanced individual like Charlie Sheen in his <laughs> corner to, to counteract So he's got that. Charlie Sheen, um, Mike Tyson and Gary Busey. Yeah, he's also got Scott Bayo, who you may remember oh, yeah. as Chochi in Happy Days. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Was he not in Chips as got, well? Uh, uh, only as a guest star. He's got Stacey Dash, who you may remember from the movie Clueless, if your knowledge of 90s movies is as good as mine. It's not. And who else has he got? No. Um, it's a sort of Jim David- it's a sort of Jim Davidson supporting the Tories situation, really, isn't it? Well, there's nothing wrong with yeah, that. Well, he's... Well, no, but what I'm saying is, is that the lovies, you know, yeah. all, the, all the great sort yeah. of actors and musicians yeah. are on the, are usually on the side of the Democrats and Labour Party, mm. and and the Tories and people like Trump can only ever turn out mm. uh, a, a sort of range of, uh, of rather oddballs. Yeah, but you see, uh, the thing is, a lot of this is all to do with trying to um, guess the winner and be popular, isn't it? The the, the problem with um, problem Sandra with most um, mm. celebrities in this world, okay is that they have yeah. this desperate need to prove they are kind and, and, and generous people and that they want to look after the downtrodden, they want to make out that they're going to, you know, um, be against all wars because people starve in wars. They're completely impractical people who just want to be liked, OK? So, so they want to be liked, so they go with the candidate thinks, that they think is most likeable. And of the two, that must have been a very hard decision for them. Well, if you're a bleeding heart liberal, then you go for the bleeding heart candidate. Exactly. And, uh, most of them support these kind of charities and causes yeah. as part of their persona. Yes. Because when these people first become famous and get uh, handled by, let's call them handlers, yes. ma- uh, managers, agents, publicists, they ask them one thing, what cause do you want to support? Yes, that's uh, right. Because you have to be seen as the, as the right kind of uh, celebrity. And so, uh, yes, it does fit their brand. You are quite right. Yeah. And Donald Trump is using this almost as a campaign issue. That's uh, right. Saying, well, they're full of it anyway, so uh, Hollywood celebrities don't matter. It's mm. all about the real people. So yeah. we, we will see. However, in such a close election, mm. uh, maybe it will make the difference. If there's anyone left who is an undecided voter, mm. maybe they'll say, well, I like Katy Perry. I'll see what... Uh, I'll, I'll vote for her candidate. Yeah, but you, you see, know, I, we'll see, I don't out. think in places like Smithtown in Pennsylvania, anybody there is going to be impressed by the fact that Hillary Clinton's whipped up a load of, you know, uh, A-list celebrities from the West Coast of California, where everybody's mad. Uh, to well, that's so, not very to, to, in the West Coast. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not to, to, well, I'm an immigrant. Uh, exactly. To, um, well, you'll be out then, won't you? To support her. I think the people of Pennsylvania oh, will say who is most likely to reverse, you know, the disaster that's hit the steel industry over the last two decades? And the answer to that is they will think it would be Donald Trump. 
Well, in Pennsylvania, which he uses as a perfect example because it's a must-win state for Trump yep. if he is to take the election, uh, yes, so many of the electorate are too busy um, mm. concerned about where the next paycheck is coming from exactly. because they've all been thrown out of work because of the death of the, uh, the industry there. Yes, yes. And so, uh, yeah, it is in these swing states uh, that you know, he is making the uh, mm. the uh, the argument. Mm. Uh, but but uh, this is the interesting. To do it, and it's going to be fascinating to watch. Well, it will be because I mean, we're not necessarily looking to have a massively uh, you know political conversation with you, Sandro. We'll mm. be doing a lot of that tomorrow, of yes. course, as the results come Thank in. Thank God for that. Yeah, well, mm. indeed. I mean, we mm. play these strengths on this show. So the thing is, right, that <laughs> well, it's all very well to say you know somebody in Pennsylvania isn't going to be that impressed with Katy Perry endorsing Trump, but the problem is the people who are supportive of Trump are the most likely ones um, to believe. His, his kind of allegations that the liberal elite run the world and, you know, that Hillary Clinton's rigged the election and all of that kind of stuff. And the problem is there's not enough of them, really, to get him elected, I don't believe. To quote Donald Trump when he won the great state of Nevada, I love the poorly educated. Mm. And uh, yes, he is indeed sort of playing on those those fears and those basic values. And, and you say there's maybe not enough. And there probably isn't. There's probably 2% not enough of them. So that if the polls are, are correct, uh, then he will fall just short. And so uh, maybe, maybe, just maybe, he should have recruited some more celebrities to his cause. But mm. uh, I'm sure there'll be inquests. Whoever wins, whoever loses, and books will be made about this, oh, yeah. movies will be made, and mm. radio discussions will continue. Oh, and, and whichever one of them does win, it will mm. be massively interesting over the next four years in the White House as well, because there will be one scandal after another, I'm sure, whether it's Hillary or whether it's Donald, you know. Um, but the last time you and I spoke uh, about this, Sandro, you were attending, I believe, a, a debate party, because there was a, uh, the 75 million people that watched the, I think it was the, uh, the second debate between Trump and Clinton. Um, there was a debating, right. there was a debate party that you were watching. Um, I mean, this is assuming that, that we're right, the most important election in American presidential history. Is it going to be a massive turnout higher than ever? Yes, it is, because there have been queues of up to six hours for people waiting to vote in advance. And that's extraordinary here in California, where the turnout at the last local elections was 8%. Mm. Yes, you heard that right, 8%. Really? Um, but this election has got people so engaged, probably because they have so much hate for one candidate or the other, that it's driving them out to the, the voting booths. Mm. And America just can't cope. They've not seen anything like it. So I, I think if the day before the election, the early voters are, are having to wait six hours, what's it going to be like in a few hours oh. when the polling booths open? So, uh, yeah, it could be a while before we get a result, and we might well get a disputed one because uh, it seems very, very disorganised. Uh, Michelle Obama said four years ago, we've got to sort out all these problems with the polling booths. It hasn't happened, and I think that could be the next day story. Mm. Mm. And as far as what you're doing tomorrow and where you're going to be and where you're going to watch it all, is it, are people organising lots of different events and things? Uh, yes, they are. Yes, it's it's almost like uh, w watching watching the cup final or a big match. It's it's house parties. Um, it's uh, it's not so much families gathering because families are very much divided over this election. But it's it's like minded friends who are gathering all over uh, the country for viewing parties. Um, normally, every night um, at this time of year, I'm at a movie screening uh, because the awards season campaign is underway, where there's screenings every single night um, with movie stars turning up uh, to meet awards voters like myself. But nothing planned for tomorrow, because they know everyone will be at home watching the election results uh, come in. As, mm, as well that's right. absolutely right. Now, getting on to a bit of real celebrity, please, Sandro. Maria Carey, right? Yes. What an Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey, an incredible story unfolding, and I'm picking up pieces of it, that the reason why she split with the billionaire um, Australian investor, what's his name? Packer. Old, uh, Jamie Packer, that's right. James yeah. Packer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, is because he asked her to sign a $30 million prenup, and she thought that that was massively undervaluing her and uh, threw a strop, but is now, after saying, you know, money doesn't mean anything to me, attempting to sue him for $50 million for her hurt feelings in breaking off the engagement. Absolutely. Um, money is very much at the centre of Mariah's world. When she did her one 
disastrous season as host of American Idol, she got paid $16 million uh, just for, you know, the 30 or whatever episodes yeah. uh, sitting in the judge's chair of, of that one. Mm. Um, uh, her, the money she gets for uh, playing her show in Las Vegas, enormous. We're mm. talking uh, telephone number digits here. So yeah. this is her world. And yes, there's lots of theories about that, why that relationship broke up. That is the one I, I champion. We've heard everything from um, Scientology involvement yes. to a, a, a relationship with a, with a backup dancer. Mm. Uh, but uh, usually uh, the explanation for all things in Hollywood, especially in relationships, is mm. money. And uh, this one's got really nasty. Imagine if they'd actually made it down the aisle. <laughs> the exactly. And, and I don't wish to be unkind to, uh, to any woman, but... When I look at Mariah C- Carey, right, <laughs> and I see... I don't know why I'm yes. trouble with her name. No, and I, I see her age and I see, you know, her experience in life and all that. She, she's not actually the, the best-looking woman <laughs> in the world at the moment, and I don't wish to be unkind, but I mean... Well, what do you mean by that? Well, what I'm saying is that if old... Well, uh, she's not a model, she's trading on her voice. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I mean, what I'm saying is if old Jamie Packer, he could go back to Australia, find Miss Australia or something like that, or find a girl on Bondi Beach or something like that, he was actually more attractive than Mariah Carey, but of course Mariah Carey well, is Mariah he Carey. In, he was in love with her. Eh? Maybe he was in love with her. I know that's an alien concept to you. No, but these these sort of or, mega... Or maybe that's his type. Maybe voluptuous uh, um, pop divas who have a cash obsession are just the kind of woman he likes. Ours is not the reason why. It might be his type. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, to talk about... Uh, what do they describe women like her as? High... Um, high maintenance. High maintenance, maintenance. Is, yeah. is an understatement, isn't it? Didn't she used to well, order something like 250,000... Yeah, California, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or try, you know, yeah. uh, some of the girls we used to know in New York. But what about uh, the flowers that she used to get? Apparently she used to spend a fortune on flowers. Well, apparently he, object- he said, look, I might be a billionaire, but if you're spending $100,000 a month on flowers mm. for your various houses around the world, I ain't going to be a billionaire for much longer. I mean, you know, this is the well, high-maintenance problem. It- you know, somebody once said to me that Mariah Carey can make any man a millionaire so long as he starts off a billionaire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, he yeah. maybe seems, <laughs> yeah. seems to yeah. be spotting mm. the writing on the mm. wall here. I mean, yeah. I could have told him that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely yeah. right. Well, listen, Sandra, mm. a delight mm. as ever. Um, good luck with uh, watching the election tomorrow. Mm. We, we're doing an all-night show, so we might come to you at one point or other and get your views on Definitely. what's going on uh, if, you, uh, right. if you manage to stay if off you're the around for the evening. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. I'll be here always, whenever you need me. Lovely. Right, thanks very Thank much you very indeed. much indeed. Sandra mm. there uh, with a look at uh, what's going on in the Trump-Clinton celebrity battle. Yes, That's yes. some great names that old Trump's got behind him, though, isn't it? Gary mm. Busey, Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Stevie Wonder basically said yesterday oh, that voting for Trump would be yeah. like letting him drive. <laughs> yeah, so, a, you know, they're all piling that's in. That's self-deprecating, though, isn't it? It is, isn't, isn't it? it? He's lost all his hair as well. I haven't seen Stevie Wonder for a long time. Um, you know, he used to have that long have sort of plats, didn't flowing he? plaits. Yes, yeah, he's completely bald now. Barely recognisable. Yes. This yes. is talk sport. Mm. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Sport, we are the two mics. As I said, there will be a massive election night special coming up on the show tomorrow. Porky's now pointing at me uh, in a very, what can only be described as, determined way. What do you want? Because I've had a thought. Have you? Yeah. Oh, well, good. I'm glad to hear it. Americans in this country get a vote. Yes. Bobcat Bob! Bobcat Bob! Bob. Bob, Bob, Bobcat be... Bob, Bob be voting for well, tomorrow night, folks! He will be... <laughs> Well, you know, his radar went off a bit, didn't it, the weekend, you'd have to say. Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah, you know. It's Bobcat Bob, a Democrat or Republican, we oh. need to know. <laughs> and he's got to push that envelope. <laughs> he's going to be, he's, well, I mean, any excuse to get away from Swansea at the moment, I would have thought, because, <laughs> I mean, what a miserable, I mean, he still hasn't won a game. Yeah, he hasn't won a game. Although no. the only saving grace yeah. is Sunderland won a mm. game and mm. are still bottom. Yeah, well, but, but only, only by, barely, because it's 5-5, five, five, yeah, isn't it, the points at the only, bottom? Only by, no, but it's only on goal difference, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean, they've got five points each. But mm. um, if you said to uh, Bob, you know, uh, Bob, can you reveal uh, who uh, you're going to be voting for in the US general election, <laughs> his reply will be, 
The both on my radar! <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you better get old Berbatov in as soon as possible <laughs> exactly. uh, if he wants to get anywhere out of the relegation zone. Oh, absolutely, old yeah. Bobcat Bob. Yeah. Now, how about this? You get a lot of mm. abuse coming in, many, much of it from Scotland fans, oh, yes. of course. Uh, the Burke that we were referring to earlier is Oliver Burke, uh, says Hunter. He says okay. he's a, a sick player, meaning he's a very good player. Yeah. Tall, pacey, decently technical, one of Scotland's greatest prospects. Oh, really? This is a guy who plays for Leipzig. Plays for Leipzig, mm. okay, yeah, well, that's good. Pete says, utter garbage from the Porkmeister. Mm. Slim Jim Baxter was never known as Jinky. That was only ever Jimmy Johnson. Typical Parry Blag. No, I'll accept that. I'll accept that. Well, but uh, I, I have, I, I swear to you, I have um, spoke to Sunderland fans in the past who've referred to him as uh, that's rubbish. As, as Jinky Jim. You know that's rubbish. No, it's not Absolute rubbish. rubbish. It's he not, was known as rubbish. Slim Jim only. He was known as Slim Jim. I, I well, totally agree with that. he wasn't known as Jinky totally Jim that. ever. I didn't life. say that. I said yes, that did. Sunderland fans have referred to him in that tone to me. <laughs> I'm you telling you. You won't give up, will you? No. How about this from St. John? Yeah. Is Burke his first or second name? I thought you said Burke and Hare. Mm. You thought his name's Burke, Burke and Hare. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. That's honestly. actually a conversation we had. Yeah, well, it was misheard. Uh, don't really? worry about that. No, look, I don't want to be um, unkind or uh, in any way... I thought you were rather ungentlemanly uh, about Mariah Carey, by the way. Why? Well, you're more or less saying she's a short, ugly, fat woman. No, I never said that. You've well, said you said those well things. Said I, I've said that for a guy like who's a billionaire... Mind you, how old is uh, old Jamie... Um, what's his name? Jamie who? Uh, the guy who's... Jamie... Alex James. No, Mariah Carey is about to marry him. Oh, the, Jamie the, Packer. Jamie Packer, the Australian billionaire. I don't know how old he is. I mean, he's in his mid You're the guy who seems to be obsessed with Mariah Carey's love life. Surely you no, should know how old her boyfriend is. I think she's a fascinating woman. Ever Why? since I told you the story that she came to the hotel in London... Realised that there wasn't a red carpet outside when yeah. she was about to enter. Yeah, yeah. Rang, got an aide to ring the hotel while she drove round London for a bit longer in the back of her chauffeur-driven car mm. until they rolled out literally a red carpet and a mm. load of three-foot-high candles along the edge of the carpet to welcome her into the hotel. Yeah. How I mean, if that's is, not how is, deverish. How old is she? Well, what's wrong she's with about being 48, a I think. Well, what's wrong with being a diva if you're Mariah Carey? I mean, she is actually, you know, correctly named as a diva. She's a singer. She should be, have a star kind of uh, context. Remember the uh, remember the Oscar winning actress um, in Probably t- Titanic, but she didn't win the Oscar for that. She won it for The Reader, right? Oh, so, yeah. so I'm talking about Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet, who Kate... only takes her clothes off for artistic purposes. Is that but right? In, in, in every film, I don't know about that. No, but she always gives interviews saying, you know, well, of mm. course, n- you know, nude scenes are very difficult. Mm. Um, but it's always in the artistic context of which the film is set. Okay. But in every film she's ever been in, yes. she takes the clothes off. And you're casting aspersions on this, are you? Well, I'm saying that it's a load of old cobblers, isn't are it? Are you? Yeah. Well, I, I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't know because I'm not an award-winning actress. Anyway, the point of my story <laughs> is... <laughs> what's your problem? Mm? Hey? What's wrong with you? Well, mm. because amongst many, many yeah. things that you are not... Yeah. I didn't expect you to ever no, say exactly, that. Exactly. But, I'm not an uh, award-winning actress. But anyway, after she uh, got, you know, huge um, sort of plaudits oh. for uh, her role in Titanic and it became the biggest grossing film ever, she she went back to her ordinary life and mm. took a went on holiday with some of her family to yeah. one of these places where you swing through the trees on... Um, what? You know, you, you cycle around a lot amongst the trees and they've got all these walkways at tree level, hey? you know what I mean? Well, you cycle them. No, no. You don't cycle on those. No, no, you cycle on the ground, yeah. but above you there's all these people walking around on these sort of wooden bridges. What are those places called? Like, the jungle. No, they're not the jungle. They're like... Um, the jungle. No, no, they're, um, you know, they're adventure parks for children, all that kind of stuff, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? What, you mean like Disneyland? Not even like Disneyland. but you mean in this country? In this country. In you mean centre like parks? Centre parks, that's right. Yeah, not I've been to centre parks. Like, yeah, that's right. I went to the one near Longley. Oh, that's right. It's Years all that ago. sort of thing, isn't it? You have these walkways at I didn't see any level. walkways. Yeah, you do. No. Anyway. I didn't see any. The point of the story is... Point of the story what is the is, point of the story? Well, I'm referring to you I'll saying... I'll tell you what they have got, though, is they've yeah. got an outdoor um, sort of flume that you can go down. Oh, that's right, And even yeah. when it's cold. Why do you keep saying I? Well, because I'm agreeing with you. Do you want me to disagree with you? You don't say I. Do you want me to say nay? Nay? (laughs) (laughs) You don't say I. You never say I. Well, I just have. I just have. You're not Scottish (laughs) or from the North East. Get on with it. Come on. You know. Well, what about Kate Winslet? Well, uh, what I was going to say is, so she goes off to one of these things and and people take pictures of her riding around on a bike. Yeah. And then suddenly, you know, some agent gets hold of her and says... Kate, this is all wrong. Mm. She said, well, what do you mean? I'm only being, you know, like normal. Having a said, normal holiday. No, you can't be normal yeah, anymore. Right. You've been in the world's biggest grossing film. Yeah. Now you've got to start acting yeah. like an actress. Right. She said, but, you know, I just want to be my... No. And so, basically, mm. and I'm not casting any aspersions on Kate Winslet, she was told, 
you shouldn't be that available to the yeah, public to be right. cycling round in a centre park or yeah. something like that. You know, well, probably sensible. Also, and, and she can't be photographed anywhere anymore. He, can she? Yeah, exactly, and, and and all that kind of stuff. And and so she was at one uh, end of the sort of uh, diva scale, yeah. i.e., the very very lowest end. And Mariah Carey, of course, is right up at the top at the other well, end. I'm not sure if that would still be the case. And I if, think Kate's a bit of a diva now oh, as well. Oh, yeah, I'm sure she is. She changed. She took advice and, and changed. What I'm saying is. If by being what Mariah Carey is, you get $16 million for yeah. appearing in a failed TV show, mm. then perhaps Mariah Carey's got it more right. Well, you know I think I mean? Kate Winsett's got a bit more than $16 million, to be honest. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, she's changed uh, enormously now. What I'm saying is that the, the original idea that you can be, uh, you know, woman of the people yeah. and international celebrity uh, award-winning yeah. actress, it, it doesn't, speaking uh, of, uh, doesn't make. Speaking of which, mm. uh, Becky says this, that's Porky off next year's woman of the year list. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to be unkind to any woman, but yeah. she's not good-looking. Well, no. <laughs> well, she, well, I'm just a statement. That's, a, that's just a statement of fact. I well, said, this is your... Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Exactly. I, 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 I well, should you, qualify that well, by saying, say in my that, opinion. In your opinion. In my opinion. Yeah. I'm, I'm not an expert on a womanly beauty. Aren't you? Uh, well, not necessarily. What are you an expert on? Well, you know, all sorts of things. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm just saying, in my opinion, yeah. you know, if I had the choice of, you know, I don't know... Entertaining, romancing, you know, some of the fam- <laughs> most famous women in the world, Mariah Carey wouldn't be on, well, on my list. How about all. this from Sinjin? Mm. Porky turns his snout up at Mariah Carey but salivates over Sheila Ferguson. Where do you start? <laughs> no, no. She is, of course, 69, is she, she not? She, yeah, and she's a very nice lady. Is she? Yeah, that's all I can say. Well, you don't know her very well, do you? Well, I, 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 I know this for a fact. Do you? I know it. Okay. Uh, Gift Gaff says Steve Archibald won with uh, Aberdeen, Premier Division 79 80, Spurs FA Cup 80 81, mm. Charity Shield 81. Mm. UEFA Cup 83 84. Yeah. Uh, he then says uh, he also helped Barcelona win La Liga 84 85, mm. Copa de la Liga 85 86. Not yes. bad for an all right player, Paul. No, no, he had a very successful career. Mm. But I mean, he doesn't go into the annals of um, outstanding Scottish players like Dennis Law or Paddy Crerand or Souness or um, I disagree. Alan Hansen. I, I disagree. Really? Steve Archibald was okay. one of the most decorated players Scotland ever had. You may well be right. just heard. You may well be right. I am right. This is Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics coming up for uh, listography, of course. And tomorrow we'll have a special edition of Ask Porky yes. uh, with an American theme. Yes. What do you think? I mean, we'll put that out a little bit later on during the day. Yes. Uh, on our Facebook page and we people can ask questions we'll, about it. We certainly will. Yeah. Certainly will. Uh, now, uh, here's one from Julian who oh. says, Someone near you, MG, has one of those jungle playgrounds in the woods. Mm-hmm. Porky's favourite band, A Clue to Whom? I don't, know who, I don't know who that would be. What's that? Well, he's, I don't know whether he's suggesting there's a centre of parks near me. There is a centre of parks in, uh, just outside of Longley in, uh, in uh, the West Country. Yes, but and that's in another, Wiltshire, isn't it? Yeah, and there's another yeah. one. I think it might, it's sort of on the Wiltshire, Wiltshire Somerset border. I and think. there's one in Nottinghamshire. Uh, there is, I think, and there's also one up in the Lake District. Yeah, there is. I've been they're all well. over the place. They're no. all over the place. It's, yeah. a, it's a French company, I think, that runs it. Uh, is it? Mm. Yeah. Okay. I didn't really enjoy my time there, actually. You get a little villa, yeah. and people were cycling around. Mm. It's quite busy mm. and. Uh, they've got one of those kind of communal swimming pools that's got waves in it and all that. But yeah. I found it all a bit like sort of something out of one of those... Um, like signs. No, not really. Yeah. I mean, it's no. a sort of... It's terribly middle class, yeah. which I don't particularly like either. But no, it's also... It? But it's also... Well, you like upper class, do you? No, I don't like any yeah. class. I don't really like any class. I mean, I went to mm. a place at the weekend with the kids where they like to go cycling called Bedgebury, mm-hmm. uh, which is lovely. It's a pine yes. tum, actually. A pine tum. Oh, is it? Do you know what a pine tum is? No, what's a pine tum? It's a place where they have a lot of pine trees. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, a bit like an arboretum. I see, yeah. It's called a pine tum. Okay. And they have concerts there in the summer. Mm. You know, people like Simply Red have played there and Simple Minds and people like that. Um, and it's beautiful. Yeah. But it's very, very full of people driving Volvos and calling their children Henrietta. You know, that's all, the, that's all you ever I quite see. like that sort of place. You would, wouldn't you? Yeah, why not? Well I, well, I just think it's a shame that Britain has to be so completely, utterly ruled by the class system. Well, it's ridiculous. I mean, people still go to Butlins and I could go there as well. I'm a man of the people, you know. I You're a man go... of the people? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no really? problem at all. OK. Yeah. Well, fact... why don't you go to Butlins then? Why don't you go and have a holiday in Butlins? Well, I might do, but I mean, I can't see the attraction. It's mostly built uh, for families, and uh, I wouldn't be taking the family with me. Listen, I've come across a new um, incentive. I mean, it's all about America this week, isn't it? But a new, a new incentive American psychologists inject into sport. Do you know what they tell people? What? They, 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 they're telling people now that you've got to succeed in sport because uh, you're a sportsman, you're lucky you're a professional sportsman, and... Guess what? And then the then the uh, you know the sports person says what says it's better than being dead. What? Yeah, they tell people that they they 
being a sports doesn't person... doesn't sound like a very sort of a cosy psychology, yeah, does it? Yeah, next time England reach a World Cup penalty shootout, manager should not give them tackle advice on the locker room. He should just remind them that one day they will be dead, they will die, and that their <laughs> insignificant, pointless <laughs> lives will never have a meaning. Well, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? No, I think it's great. Well, you think you would, you would encourage people and motivate them by saying that to them? Yeah, they, exactly. Well, you wouldn't. Do I'll you want you your why. life to pass by and I'll be insignificant? No, because I think the young, mm. particularly young mm. people who are involved mm. in sport, mm. you know, are so far removed from the thought of their own death yes. that it wouldn't even have any effect on them. Well, it, I mean, when I was in my 20s, yeah. if somebody said to you, you know, one day you're going to die, mm. so you better live as well as you can, mm. I would have said, well, that's a completely irrelevant thing to say to me because you're not thinking about that. Well, uh, I mean, I'm not thinking about it now, well, this but is, I'm a lot closer to death than I was when I was in my 20s. You're closer than you think. Why? What do you mean by that? 80 fags a day. I don't smoke 80 I'd cigarettes a day. I'd watch it. When are you going to stop uh, telling all these ridiculous, anyway, you know, um, overblown exaggerations about me? Anyway. I do not smoke 80 cigarettes a day. Anyway, let's get back to this story. Yeah, it's that's very right. important. Yeah, let's get off that subject. Uh, American psychologists claim to have shown that just the act of getting people to consider their own mortality will motivate them to improve their sporting performance, mm. OK? Well, I think that's not the way to do it. 75 keen basketball players were asked to either play a one-on-one game or take part in a one-minute basket shooting challenge. Uh-huh. Unknown to them... We were meant to be doing that, weren't we? I think we were. Unknown to them, though, half were primed to think about death, either by filling in a survey asking for their thoughts on dying or by being briefed by an experimenter wearing a T-shirt which had a skull made out of the word death on the front of the T-shirt. Well, that's mad. Yeah. That's just mad. Those who have been reminded of the inevitability of their own demise performed significantly better... They scored 30% more points in the basket challenge and 20% more in the one-on-one matches. Really? They took more shots, better shots, they hustled more, they ran faster, said Uri Lifshin from the University of Arizona. Uri See, who? it's amazing what I find in these journals Uri of mine. Who? Uri Uri uh, Lifshin. 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 Yeah. L-I-F-S-H-I-N. OK. The study um, had surprising results, but it fits in with a theory known as terror management, OK? I don't think that would work. This is in the Journal of Sport and Exercise Psychology. Mr Lifshin is a PhD student and his colleagues explain that humans are faced with a unique unique biological problem. Unique, did you nearly say that? No, unique biological problem. (laughs) You did, didn't you? The awareness of their own mortality. This, they said, created a a potential for overwhelming anxiety. Uh To manage this problem and not feel this anxiety... Cultural world views allow people to feel that they're valuable members of a meaningful and lasting universe rather than mere material animals fated only to perish upon death. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Well, no, it's not amazing at all. I think it's rather brutally cruel, actually. I don't when, think you should uh, traumatise no, people in that way. No, when reminded of death... Humans will try to boost their own self-worth to compensate. Yeah, but you see, that's only true if you're thinking about it in the first place. If you don't mm. ever think about death, then I really don't. No, but then if somebody they... said to me, mm. you better do this, it's better than dying, I'll just tell yeah. get lost. Yeah, but no, but you see, the thing is, these psychologists, they're very clever, they remind people you're not alive forever, so what's the point of having an insni- insignificant yeah, but, life? Well, so you better try harder and get it done. Yeah, but, I'd like to see Gareth Southgate exercise a bit of that in the England dressing room, to be honest. Well, doesn't Henry because, Winter say that he continually gives very, very inspirational chats? Well, that's all inspirational. Um, which I can't imagine, yeah, really. No, I can't either. I, I think it's a lot of... Maybe uh, Henry hasn't heard very many inspirational conversations. Gobble, gobbledygook. How about this one from Ethan, who says, yes. I think Porky would crumble like a schoolboy if Mariah Carey even looked at him, let alone showed any interest. If Mariah Carey rang me up and said, you come round and share a bottle of wine with me in the, you know... Um, Lanesborough. Uh, yeah, in the, in the penthouse at the Lanesborough, yeah. just you and I. Yeah. And I'll be sitting in a, you know, a bubble bath at the time. Yeah. And you'll be sitting near to me. I'd turn her down. Really? Yeah, of course Why? I would. Well, because on what grounds? On the grounds that she's self-obsessed, mm. so therefore... You can't have two of you in the same room, can uh, you? So therefore... I'll, I'll ignore <laughs> that. So therefore, I don't think she'd be very good um, company in terms of uh, conversation well, or anything. Well, was just there for one thing? Well, again, I wouldn't be that impressed, really. really. No, I wouldn't be that impressed. I like to choose my own um, sexual liaison partners in life. Liaison? Not... Uh, yes, yes. Steve McLaren. <laughs> sexual liaison. Sexual liaison partners. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and not be summoned to some, you know, multi-millionaire diva lady's uh, boudoir to satisfy her <laughs> needs. Hmm? Hmm? Good wow. yeah, How about right, this yeah. from Tony? Porky hasn't mentioned those two Scottish and Toffee legends in their own front room, Graham Sharp and Andy Gray. Oh, Graham Sharp and Andy Gray, brilliant. But we've had other great um, Scottish footballers, Everton, Alex Young, the Golden Vision, 
uh, Alex Scott, who played in the same team with him. Uh, Duncan Ferguson, you've already mentioned. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, terrific players. Mm. And, and, of course, um, we had, uh, you know, the former Rangers captain who uh, played for us, uh, David Weir. David Weir, yes. 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 Uh, he's back up there now, isn't he? He is indeed, yeah. uh, Julian is telling us uh, the mystery is being solved now. He says he's talking about Heather Mills mm. uh, off the Brightling Road. Heather Mills, actually, does have a place not far from uh, uh, where I am in Sussex, near Robertsbridge. Uh, what do you mean? Former Mrs. McCartney. Why has she come up in conversation? Well, I read you Julian's thing earlier. You said someone near UMG has one of those jungle playgrounds in the woods. I think oh, you're I saying see. that she's got one. Oh, I see. Right. She okay. lives on this kind of big house and, and, and grounds. Is there a vegan restaurant in uh, Hove still going? I don't know. No? I don't go to Hove. No. Okay. Hove's quite a long way from me. Yes, it is, yeah. Um, but it's near Brighton. Um, it mm. is very near Brighton. Yes, it's uh, as in Brighton and Hove Albion. That's right, yes, absolutely, yeah. 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 Right. Uh, now, how about this from... Uh, mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, coming up uh, next, we'll choose a listography, shall we? Good idea. Because uh, there's an awful lot of them coming in, uh, many uh, uh, related to the United States of America. Uh, Phil says you can do an adult weekend at Butlins now. It was an amazing time. i tell you what you can do, and I see the advert in the Sunday papers all the time. Does he do mean you... like a swingers weekend? Oh, I, I presume he does, yeah. But I see these um, 60s revival weekends and mm. people like Marty Wilde go, you know, yeah. and shadows and all that kind of stuff. And if you're a real old saddo, you know, and you want to sort of... The saddos, yeah, maybe yeah, they should yeah. rename themselves. <laughs> the saddos, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. talk sport. Shadows for saddos. <laughs> the two mics simulcast across the UK on talk sport and talk radio. Now, quite a few listography suggestions based yes. on the United States. Uh, David says, there's three weird people who would have beaten Clinton and Trump. Uh, one from Woodenhead, the top three things America does better or worse than Britain. Yep. Uh, Lyle says, uh, the greatest Bob Cat Bob moments, please. Yeah. Got yeah. my eye on you, boy. Did you see, actually, somebody sent a, uh, uh, a tweet in. Yeah. Um, I think it was on Friday, I think, yeah. Thursday, yeah. Um, uh, about his nine-year-old son. Well, uh, I think it was, who, mm. who constantly now uh, goes around the house doing Bobcat Bob impressions <laughs> after hearing you doing them. Uh, and he, and he got yeah. you now, boy. <laughs> Walks around the house doing it all day now, long. Um, here's one uh, yeah. uh, from Wooden, another one from Wooden. Yeah. After yeah. MG's singing performance, how about Three Hidden Talents? Three Hidden Talents. Lucy says, a song, a book and a luxury item you would take if you were to be cast away on a desert island. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Three favourite film one-liners. Yeah. Three, three worst hangovers and the parties and stories behind them. Mm. Um, and then we've got this one uh, from, uh, I think it's Nikki, mm. uh, on uh, three favourite American cities. So I quite like that. One? I quite like that. Three favourite American cities, because we've been to quite a few American cities. There'll be a tale to tell each one. Mm. Yes, yes, I dare say. Well, we can okay. do that. Let's do that. All right, we'll do that one coming okay. up uh, in a little while. Yep. Uh, David says this, I've taken the families to centre parts on many occasions, uh, but mainly to the Netherlands. I found a better value than the UK. Oh, that's interesting. I would have thought that's yeah. probably right, actually, yes. because, uh, you know, when you go to Europe, you mm. find the things are an awful lot cheaper. Oh, than, uh, well, I found it both in Sicily and in Mallorca. Really, yeah. You know, yeah, but, but I mean... Know, the fuel's cheaper, the cigarettes are cheaper. It's a less developed economy, cheaper. Sicily, than, well, yeah. than the British economy, well, it I is, suppose. But, I mean, how, yeah. how does that explain where... I mean, this is where we've often talked about the euro and all yeah, the rest yeah. of it. I mean, you know, you buy a bottle of Prosecco yeah. uh, in Sicily yeah. uh, in a supermarket, it was like three euros. That's right, yeah. I mean, you can't get... I mean, I know you can get them probably mm. at, almost as cheap as three pounds or four pounds here, but... Yeah, you'd I mean, have to just, search around for it. I mean, they, they had some mm. really nice wine for like two euros a bottle. I know, yeah. It's good. Isn't it? But they make it there, I suppose. So, uh, well, yeah, I know. But then, it's, shipping you know, but charges, they bring it here, it becomes nine quid. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I know. To rip off, uh, yeah. to rip off society we're living here without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, Steve says, how about name three election results you would have changed if you could have? Well, I don't think we could do that. No, I don't think so. Mm. No. Uh, David says, have you not reached your pinnacle of happiness trying to strangle each other amidst bladderation and Rogerization? No, um, I don't think no, so. No, I haven't got to that point yet. I'm afraid. Mm. No. Mm. Uh, David says, how about your five favourite Americans that you have interviewed or would like to have interviewed, and why? Mm, I don't that's know five, five and not three, exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I think we'll stick with the three cities, OK? Yeah, we'll do that. Definitely, then. not a problem at all. We know yeah. what we're doing. OK, mm. we know what we're doing. Yeah, we know what we're doing. OK. Uh, now, um, what I was going to talk to you about was uh, this situation involving involving um, tyre pressure dangers, OK? Tyre pressure now, dangers. Now, you've got a new car, right? I have. I've had problems with the tyres in my yes. Merc and before that in my Jag, OK? Well, I suppose it's it's the it's the sort of the, the, the blessing and the curse of technology, isn't it? Because yeah, it is. Because in in an old car, yes. before the days of computerisation and, and you know dashboard uh, That's right. readouts, you wouldn't have known if your tyres nope. were, were, were not performing properly unless the car started listing in yeah, one direction absolutely. or another. Absolutely. But listen to this from one of my motoring journals. Thousands of motorists could be driving with dangerously underinflated tyres because their car's warning systems 
fails to alert them to the loss of pressure. Mm. Now, this is what we've talked about, haven't we? Well, we have, but yours yeah. has I mean, yours has, has, has actually told you it has. more than you've wanted it to has. know. It has, it has, yeah. Right. The system passed legally required trials in laboratories but repeatedly failed to operate on the road in results that campaigners say have strong similarities to the Volkswagen diesel emission test scandal. Oh dear. I.e., what they're saying is, you know, laboratory testing of these systems isn't always replicated when the car's on the road. No, right. Yeah. What I get when I switch my uh, my car on mm. uh, is it says it does a sort of tyre pressure um, um, sim- simulation. Yeah, that's or something right. Like yeah. That. And it says at the moment um, uh, the uh, 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 the car is, is, is on light load. That's right. So presumably if you put loads of stuff in it, yeah. you have to change that. Well, you... Or I don't know whether it changes automatically. No, it doesn't change. You can't put more air into your tyres unless you actually no, 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 put but, air in. No, but what I'm saying is it has different settings for how what's yeah, it does. whether yeah, it the does. car has got a light load or a heavy load. Yeah, that's right, it does. Um, I thought you were going to make a joke there about me getting into it and changing no, it into a heavy no, load. No, no, Not that surprised. would have been too obvious. Too obvious. No. Um, because presumably you're in the car when it says light load anyway. It does, So yeah. I wouldn't be able to make the joke. Cause, well, uh, it wouldn't be the first time you made a unless joke. Unless the technology was wrong. That wasn't particularly funny. Anyway, uh, it says here, a Volkswagen Golf failed to detect an underinflated tyre in 14 out of 16 real-world tests, OK? Right. And a Fiat 500L failed all 16 tests. This is researched by uh, independent examiners. Underinflated tyres have more contact with the road, which can result in overheating, leading to premature wear, wear tread, right. uh, separation and sudden loss of pressure. It can result in blowouts and mm. cause fatal crashes. Oh dear. All new cars since 2014, I didn't know this, by the way, have to be fitted with tyre pressure monitoring systems uh-huh. called TPMS right. that pass official type approval tests. Some directly measure the pressure in each tyre, but other slightly cheaper indirect systems are supposed to detect pressure changes by comparing the wheel's rotational speed. Right. So mm. they're saying every every car has to have this. Every car has to have it now. People yep. that can afford to pay for the very expensive cars with very expensive... Well, I can't understand that. You surely don't get one of those in a... Like, you buy yourself a new sort of... Well, if you said that was a Fiat 500, which is a little yeah. Fiat, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Well, I suppose so. Yeah, I mean, if you, I mean, no matter how small the car is now, because if, yeah. if you rent cars and stuff, you know... Um, yes. The, 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 the new cars, I mean, they've all got every bang, every sort of bang and whistle yeah. you could imagine. they should have. Because you do see adverts now for cars which are smaller than our cars, yeah. which have this side parking stuff and all that sort of yeah, stuff, yeah. don't you? You know... Mm. It says four in ten cars, this is a conclusion to this report, on UK roads have at least one dangerously underinflated tyre. Yeah. Um, a total of 62% have a tyre with pressure below the recommended level and 37% have a tyre so low that it could cause a crash. Hmm. That's well, amazing. Surely if one of your tyres is lower than the others... The car, you will feel the car pulling in one direction or another. Well, I'd have thought so, but you don't always, you see, with modern tyres mm. because they're so spread across the road. Uh, it says uh, uh, tyre pressures in some cars so low they could cause a crash. Um, underinflated tyres can compromise a car's road holding, its braking, and its steering. And the tyre pressure monitoring systems, which became compulsory on new cars in 2014, were meant to address these problems. Mm. A warning signal is meant to appear on the dashboard within 10 minutes when the pressure in one tyre drops by 20%. See, mm. I didn't realise all that. Yeah. So it's quite a serious issue. It really is. Now, Kevin uh, seems to have de- detected something that, uh, which I think he's done mistakenly. He says, oh, yes. why is this topography always what Mike Parry chooses and MG just has to go along with it? No, it's Well, not. it's generally something that we agree on. It is, generally something It might sound on. like that, yeah. that he's choosing it, but that's yes. just because of the way it sounds. Yes, exactly. Now, Scott has sent me this, which is, mm. I presume, an old uh, cartoon, Porky's Tire Trouble, it says. Oh. Um, which is uh, a supervision by Robert Clampett, yeah. animation by somebody else. Yeah. It looks a bit like one of those old Looney Tunes. I it think, does, it? yeah. And it's uh, spelt T-I-R-E, so it's quite clearly American. That's right, yeah. Yes. Now, uh, here, I've got a story that's going to shock you, right? Oh, yes. But it won't affect you too much because it's not happening in okay. a first-class okay. cabin. British Airways, right? Has decided they're going to shrink their seat space. Oh, yeah, I've seen all that. To yeah. increase so capacity. get more people into the same amount of space. In, in economy. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And it's actually by quite a large number. What mm. they're going to do is they're going mm. to go from nine yeah. seats per row to yeah. ten. Yeah. An extra 52 seats in the, in the economy cabin. Yeah, I know. That's going to make it unbearable. Very unbearable. Because I, one of the I nice agree. things about flying BA, yes. if you were going transatlantic mm. or flying maybe um, uh, Virgin or something, yes. is that they're a bit more roomy That's right. than, 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 the th- than, the, than the planes, the, sort of the uh, the budget airlines. The Norwegian. Tend to fly around. No, actually, Norwegian was very roomy. Was it? Norwegian was yeah. brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I have to say. Yeah, OK. Um, uh, it's very cheap. Yeah. Uh, you get free Wi-Fi on board. Mm-hmm. I was able to send my first tweet from an airline. Right. Because, yeah, you were. Yeah, that's you know, right. Yeah, we were always, yeah. remember, for years we were told, oh, you can't use your phones sure. while you're on a plane. Sure. Um, and, uh, no, I, I was very impressed with them, actually. 
By the way, yes, that's good. It's good. But thank uh, you. Now, by the way, I came across a report, one of my medical journals, and it's an issue you raised a couple of months ago. Right. You said to me, you said, I don't quite understand why we're all living longer, mm. when at the same time we're all accused of getting fatter, yeah. of drinking more, yeah. of uh, Being having more unhealthy, more unhealthy and sedentary mm. uh, lifestyles. I have found a report which I may be able to unveil this week uh-huh. that for the first time in fifty-five years, yeah. life expectancy is turning down again. Oh, is it? Yeah. but well, I mean, in, in, the, in the West or in this country? In, in the West, in this country. I mean, it's not by much. It's mm. literally by six weeks or yeah. something like that. Right. But it has a peaked and it's coming down. Yeah. And you can understand why, if you take all those factors into consideration, the unhealthy lifestyle. Well, I don't know if that would be the, uh, the conclusion that they would reach, though, would it? They must do. I mean, how long can you go on drinking more than ever, eating more than ever, getting fatter more than ever, yeah. doing less exercise well, more than ever? That, well, uh, no, but they do, Mike. They do. The whole thing is the world is getting bigger and fatter. You, we all know that because cars are bigger than they used to be. Yeah. Funny enough, in, in my street uh, in Stockbroker Belt, yeah. there's a chap there who's a bit of a car enthusiast mm. and he's got an old Mini. Uh-huh. Um, well, a Mini Cooper. No, a really old Mini. I mean, I mean, I, it doesn't look old. It looks in, in peak condition, but it, it's like a 1960s Mini. Well, that's a Mini Cooper. It's not a Mini Cooper, actually. There was a version of a Mini called the Mini Cooper. It's just an ordinary Mini. Mm. But when you compare it to the modern-day Mini, it's yeah. about half the size. Yeah. I don't know anybody could get into it well, these days. Well, that new four-door Mini, which I think is called the uh, Clubman. The Clubman, that's um, right. It's quite big, actually. It is big. That's the four-wheel drive one, that, isn't it? I mean, you see, that, that Clubman is about the size of what used to be a kind of standard family car called the Ford Anglia in, well, 19, Ford Ang- in the no, 1950s. Ford Anglia was much smaller than that. Uh, maybe it was. Yeah. Well, the Ford Prefect in the 1950s was a... That a, was pretty a, small, too. Pretty small, but, I mean, about that size, honestly. Yeah, mm. amazing, the way the world has like, changed. Well, I suppose so. Mm. Um, but, you know, the world has improved as well. I mean, it's all very well saying, you know, things have got worse. But Has actually, the world improved? Yes, of course it has. Yeah. Of course it has. I don't know. People have much more now at their disposal. They have yeah. much more money. They're, there's much less poverty around. You know, do, we, do we see our neighbours? Are we allowed to leave our back door open all the time? You know... Is there, you haven't got a back door. Is the brotherly love? You haven't got a back door. Well, if I had one, uh, you know, is the brotherly love around in the world? You know, is the world a better place? Is the world a better place? That's Coronation Street cobblers. That is the world a you better know, place. Let's all stand over and look over each other's stoop and uh, gossip about the neighbours. Absolute rubbish. Complete and utter nonsense. You see, you've this, got no heart. This is talk sport. <laughs> I've been to Louisville, Nashville, Knoxville, on Babaka, Shepherdville, Jacksonville, Waterville, Coastal, Rapid, Pittsfield, Springfield, Bakersfield, Shreveport, Hackensack, Cadillac, Fond du Lac, Davenport, Idaho, Jellicoe, Argentina, Diamantina, Pasadena, Catalina, see what I mean. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. You never get tired of hearing that song, do you? No, it's brilliant. It's fantastic. Isn't it? I love yeah. the fact it's got Hackensack in it as well. Yeah, Hackensack. Do you know what other song Hackensack is in? Hackensack. It's a Billy Joel song. Uh, so it's a new who Jersey, needs who it? needs a house out in Hackensack? Who needs a house out in Hackensack? Is the line? Is that all you get for is that your money? Piano man. Uh, it's not piano man. I can't remember. It's, it's, a, a, it's a Billy Joel song anyway. Leave I'd me alone. Sing, I, I don't want to sing I'm the whole thing. I'm a family unlike, man or something. Unlike yeah. you, yeah. I don't wish to use my singing talent on the show all the time. Yes. I'm going to save it for the karaoke machine. Yes. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah good. Absolutely. Well, now, yeah. uh, we've chosen our uh, listography subject, which yes. is our three favourite cities in America. Yes. Now there is a possibility that we might choose the same ones here. Well, you go first. Uh, but I don't think that's a problem. No, it's not a problem. Uh, because, for example, well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Start with New York, right? Yeah. You go first, and I I will do cities that you don't do. Are you sure? Yes. So okay. we got six. Cities altogether. All right, then. Well, okay. I'm definitely going to have to do New York because, yeah, of course. the fact, I lived yep. there for nine years, nearly yep. ten years. Yep. My firstborn child was born there. Yes. At the NYU. Mm. I got married there. Um, spent a great deal of, uh, of, of happy times there yes. as well. And I mean, there are so many stories about New York City um, that I wouldn't know really where to begin. But no. all I can tell you is that when I first went to live there, mm. I couldn't quite believe the, the, the contrast in the style of living yeah. in New York and living in London. I'd, always, I'd pretty much always lived in London all my life. Yeah. You know, the food, the smell of the place, yes. the busyness, yes. you know, the constant movement of it. Um, the energy. The energy, energy. The yeah. energy of it. Yeah. And in the 80s, when I first lived there, it was quite a dangerous place mm. as well. Exactly. Which I quite liked. You yes. Know? Um, I was almost mugged once. I've told you that story. Mm. And, um, you know, the fact that you could drink sort of more or less around the clock. That's right. It was incredible. Yeah. Uh, the fact that it was such a melting a regenuine melting pot of, of people because that it, that it wasn't massively expensive no. compared to London. Lon- and London, yeah. of course, in those days was not what it's like now, which no. is very mixed up and very, very much uh, full of people from different cultures. Indeed, it wasn't like that. But whereas New York really was, yeah, it was. You know, and I always remember one time there was a guy called Charles Bremner. 
who was the Times correspondent for a while over yep. there. Uh, and uh, I used to go down and do some work down in the News Limited uh, build, uh, you know, bureau, which, yep. was, which was the Murdoch bureau down there in those days for, for, uh, for Australian newspapers and for some British ones. And we used to get those Skyline cabs. Yes. Um, and this really summed up New York for me the first time I went there. Um, and we got in a Skyline cab and... and Bremner fancied himself as a bit of a Russian expert. Right. You know, because he was terribly well educated yeah, and yeah. posh and all yeah. that. And he could tell that the driver, by the way he was speaking, was clearly was Russian. Russian, yeah. And so as we were sort of halfway up, um, you know, the mm. FDR, going back up to Midtown, <laughs> yeah. yeah. um, he said, Excuse me, um, where are you from? And the guy just turned around and in a very broad, sort of in- broken English mm. Russian accent, he mm. went, New York. Mm-hmm. Because he yeah, just yeah. wanted to say he was yeah. from New York. Sure. Because the thing was then, sure. no matter where you were from, That's right. you actually believed that you were from New York. You That's didn't right. say you were from Russia. No, no. You were from New York. Yeah, absolutely. And I felt very much like a New Yorker, and I still do. That's um, that's a bit like that film that um, Robin Williams made. Yeah, uh, Moscow, Moscow, on the Hudson. Moscow on the Hudson. That's yeah. right, yeah. Where he kept ringing his mother in Russia and mm. saying, Hey, Mum, I got a limo now. Right. Because he was the driver yes. of the limo, you know. And, exactly. Yeah. Hey, Mum, I got a big apartment now. Yeah. He was the doorman, yes. you know, and all that kind of Stuff, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. So um, I'd have to, I have to make New York my first one. OK, well, I look, I'll tell you what, by contrast, I'll make the other prominent city in America my first one, Washington, D.C. OK. Well, I loved living in Washington, D.C. It, it was There was something completely magical about, you know, the, the, the smell of power and money in the air everywhere you went, you know, passing convoys of presidential cars and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But basically being able to walk down Pennsylvania Avenue from one end to the other, from the Capitol, which is the most inspiring building, I think, in the world. Mm. And in those days, by the way, there were no barriers at the bottom. You could walk no. right up to the door of the yeah. Capitol. You could walk up all the steps. Right. Late at night, when I was coming back from the pub, I'd take a walk up the Capitol steps, just look at the glory of the building, come down, and then some nights I'd walk all the way up Pennsylvania Avenue to the White House. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing yeah. to think that, you know, the, this the most powerful country in the world, and, and, and you were, you know... A few hundred yards away from and the, if you the stood front as door. Well, and if you stood outside at that, that back entrance, you know, where the press That's went right, in, yeah. you could quite often see people Cushco. moving around Cushco. inside the White House and you could imagine what they were doing. That's right. And, and in fact, the round robin bar of the Willard Hotel yes. was just literally 100 yards away. So uh, on very, very cold nights, you know, it was minus 10 or something like that, you could walk up past the White House into the round robin and meet some, a few old mates there. It was, it, it was great. Mm. There was only a, a small sort of British contingent of journalists in Washington compared to New York. Yeah. Because at one time when we were in New York, there were 60 or 70 of us there. Yeah, absolutely. There was about 25. And you used to go to the Washington Press Club and see people there. It was brilliant, the whole thing. Yeah, I must say, I mean, I, I'm mm. not going to say DC because you've said it, but yeah. also, I mean, one of my favourite memories was yeah. the first and, and only time yeah. I ever went into the White House press briefing right, room yeah, was yeah. when Charles and Diana came over and right. I got a pass. And I remember walking in to the grounds of the White House. I was thinking, right. this is amazing. It is, yeah. And that's, I mean, that's part of our... I went in the Oval Office. Yeah. I, uh, I used to sit in the Oval Office and, uh, and watch the presidential briefing, you know. Oh, did you? Yes, yes. Well, didn't absolutely. they do that in the, in the press room? No, press didn't, briefing no, room. no, actually in the Oval Office. Did they? Uh, you were allowed to go in while they took the picture right. and then the rest of the briefing took oh, okay. uh, place. In I was the, surprised the in a way how small it was now. Yeah, I was, yeah. You know? Yeah, I was, yeah. Fascinating. Anyway, yeah. Right, my second one is Boston. Right. Boston I used to go to Boston. an awful lot. Boston! Boston. Mm. I used to go to an awful lot for one reason or another because it was quite yes. often court cases to cover up That's there. Right. I went up to the Schwarzenegger's wedding. Or maybe something with the Kennedys. Well, yeah, that's the story I'm going to tell because one of the times that I first went up to Boston yeah. and I got to know the city very well because I had a couple of friends up, sure. that lived up there as well sure. and mm. there was one story that I had to do where JFK Jr. Mm. Uh, had got a new girlfriend and right. she was from that part of the world a place called Marblehead mm-hmm. uh, which was just north of Boston yep. and I had to get in this car I had to rent a car drive up the coast which is a lovely road yes. um, and to find this house mm-hmm. which was a very nice but not overly you know ritzy kind of house yep. but quite big and drive going to drive up the drive yep. you know knock on the door mm-hmm. and, uh, and get the inevitable you know knock back yes. when I said you know hello I'm uh, Mike Graham from whoever it was yeah. um, uh, in London we'd like to talk to you about your daughter you know Caroline whatever her name that's is, right yeah um, who's now dating uh, JFK Jr mm. Because they hated the press, yes. everybody up there. They did, yeah. Uh, they didn't want to talk to me. Yes. Um, so I remember I had to go sort of back into the town, go and find somewhere, go and have lunch, mm. go back to the house again. Mm. But it was one of those it, one of those periods of your life where sure. um, every excuse I got to go to Boston mm. was always great. And I and I, mean, I think I ended up staying there about three nights. Excellent. And there was nowhere to stay up there. Yeah. So I always stayed in Boston down by the sort of, um, they got a little version of Capitol Hill as well. Sure. And then down by the waterfront. Indeed. Beautiful, down by the aquarium. Love Boston. Absolutely, Absolutely. Love yeah. yeah. Well, my second favourite, San Francisco. Mm. I just love San Francisco. You know, New York, Sydney, San Francisco, three favourite yeah. cities in the world, I think. And San Francisco, really, because it, you know, literally, the, the, the streetcars, mm. the hills, 
Well, the, 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 there's just the Golden Gate Bridge. The, the Golden Vista. Gate Bridge itself, Sausalito on the other side, you know, uh, just a completely... Alcatraz. Mad, uh, yeah, I, actually, I've never been to Alcatraz. I no, never but fancied you can that. see it, though. You can see it, yeah, but I never went on the boat there. I thought it was a bit too touristy, you know. Mm. But, um, you know, the Bay Area yeah. and all that kind of stuff, absolutely magical. And, and Union Square itself is just yeah. wonderful. And most things in San Francisco worth being in or seeing yeah. are just around Union Square. Yeah. You know, Sir Francis Drake Hotel. Mm. You know, Lefty O'Doul's, the uh, the baseball uh, restaurants, all those places. How about um, uh, Fisherman's Wharf? Fisherman's Wharf, absolutely. And the Marina District. And the Marina District. And and I, I just love it. It's it's living history, San yeah. Francisco. It's part of the American dream. Yeah, I didn't really get to know it as well because I only went there once and it yeah. was after the earthquake. So, oh, so half of well, it was kind right. of shut down. You know? no, I've been there about half a dozen times. And also... Hate Ashbury. You yeah. go there and you find out where yeah. the hippie revolution it's started. It's a corner, isn't it? It's a corner. Yeah. It's got. It's got. It's a. It's a post. A typical American post. Mm. Hate and Ashbury. That's yeah. what it's called. Yeah. It's the corner of uh, the two streets. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. My final one's going to be New Orleans. New Orleans. Partly yeah. because um, when I went there, I mm. went to stay there in. in um, uh, um, I guess it was about sort of mid eighties time. Yes, and it was one of those. It was one of those chasing Princess Michael stories around. Sure, um, and she'd mm. gone. There was a book festival. You know how they have the Frankfurt Book Festival every year. Yes, um, uh, where people launch their new books. Yeah, they have a similar one in America mm-hmm. in different locations. Right, this, and this one was in um, was in New Orleans. Yeah. And I've managed to find this hotel called the Windsor Court Hotel, yeah. which was beautiful, modern. Mm-hmm. Uh, luxurious, and I had a room on about yeah. the 30th floor mm. overlooking the Mississippi Delta, yeah. which was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing that I found most amazing about it was I was working with this photographer mm. uh, called Alec. I won't give his second name yep. away because I think he's still around. Yep. And he was flown in from the West Coast, mm. and he'd got there a couple of days before me. And somehow... Um, he'd managed to romance the daughter of yeah. Sherry Lewis. Remember Sherry yeah, Lewis? Yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. He used to do lamb chop and all yeah, those yeah. puppets. Mm. Um, and he and he had, uh, picked this girl up mm. who was where they're working with some publishing company. Yeah. And uh, who had a very interesting friend, and he and he said, and he and when I when I got there, and I mm. rang him, and I said, he said, oh yeah, I said, have you seen Princess Maud? He said, no. Mm. He said, but I've got this cracking. Um, uh, Girl, mm. I'm not a word that he said actually. Yes. Um, and basically, the whole weekend was a, was a sort of horizontal refreshment special, right, for both of us, right. Um, and we never saw we never saw Princess Michael. Really? No. No. We were mission, there from uh, Thursday till mm. Monday, mm. and we never saw her. Yeah. But what we did do was mm. go to loads of great parties. Um, including um, yeah. uh, including um, the Harper Collins party, yes, which was in one of these big mansions out in the sort of the outskirts of the town. Indeed, where they had the porches. It was like something out Tennessee Williams. Yeah, you know? uh, a lot of black waiters walking around with white gloves on and trays of mint juleps. Sure. Just incredible. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And, and also kind of a magical place with Mardi Gras and all that kind of thing. Indeed. So a lot of good memories for me. Okay, my third one I'm going to nominate as Santa Monica. Okay. Because I think it is a town, because Los Angeles yeah. is not a town, really. It's yeah. a sort of district. Well, it's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not part of Los Angeles, yeah. is it? Santa Monica, I did a trial there where two English guys were being tried for um, ripping off patients, for injecting sheep's urine into them. Oh, yes. To, uh, I remember this, yeah. Yeah, to... Uh, and one of them tried to kill the other one. Or no, one of them tried to kill the other and steal the business, mm. You know, it was, you know, you'll never get old if we inject sheep's urine into you. And as you say, one uh, one uh, tried to uh, steal the business off the other. The mm. other one found out, tried to kill him. Uh, one of them got eight years. And we spent most of our time there because the court case um, started so late. You'd only get the morning's um, uh, proceedings into yeah. the paper in, in London, most of the time on the beach. Um, a lot of the time, in yeah, because you'd be writing for a day later. Yeah, absolutely. You? Yeah, most of the, uh, most of the time on the beach in the King's Head uh, with the English pub, mm. watching um, English football, or believe it or not, getting invited back to these amazing houses up the hill there. You yeah. know, going back from Pacific Palisades yeah. to party all night. Yeah. It was brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. I yeah, I bet absolutely. Well, those were our three uh, favourite cities in America. Uh, that was our listography. There'll be another one same time next week. Tomorrow, of course, it's Ask Porky. We're going to ask for an American theme on that as well because it is an election special. This is Talk Sport. Now, we're going to be entering into a rather exp- exciting 24-hour period oh, here, aren't we? Oh, certainly are. Um, because mm. the polls are going to be opening. It's uh, it's not quite it's, Tuesday in America, yes. or it's not quite morning in America, as Ronald Reagan would say. Mm. Um, but it's going to be a big day, isn't it? It's going to be a massive day, because not just... I mean, people sometimes say, oh, why are people so obsessed with the American elections? Yeah. Because they have such a massive effect on the rest of the world. Of course they do. I mean, can you imagine if Donald Trump wins? 
Yeah. Can you actually imagine what that would be like? Well, you're going to have to because there's a there's a 50% chance it's going to happen. So you see, yesterday he came out and said that if he did win, hmm. which is suddenly when you start to take it a little bit more seriously, yes. that he would appoint Rudolf Giuliani, Rudy, uh, as his Attorney General. Yeah, that's right. The guy who was formerly mayor of... Uh, sorry, uh, head of the police in New York. Yeah, and he's mayor of New York as well. He was mayor yeah. as well, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, so, he was yeah. the guy that sort of cleaned up New York. And yeah, I, went, he was, yeah. I remember going there one year, I think it was around about late 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when um, I was being, I was, I, I was, I think I was over in America doing the Democratic National Convention or something. And I right. came to New York, yeah. and uh, the whole place had been completely cleansed. Yes, you know, I'd left it say two years earlier. Yes, um, where the streets were filthy, mm. there were homeless people running about all over the place. Yeah, he made the homeless disappear. Nobody still knows how that happened. No, nobody knows where they went. No, and I actually got in a cab, and the cab driver said, mm. "You know, we're getting pretty sick of this guy Giuliani. He's mm. trying to make it into Disneyland." Mm. Because mm. at that point, he was also trying to ban the um, yeah. the hot dog salesman on the corners. Yeah, no, that's right. And yeah, the, uh, yeah, the, the yeah. Kielbasa uh, 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 carts because yeah. he thought they were they were not good for people. Yeah, that's right. And, and people got fed up with him in the end because he was so he was trying to make it so sterile in New York mm. that mm. it wasn't New York anymore. Yeah, but he uh, didn't he pursue? Wasn't he the ultimate pursuer of the broken window theory? That if well, he did, yeah, yeah, you know, one broken window. If you don't follow that up, it leads to two broken windows and three broken windows, and then society starts yeah. to um, but he was fall in, apart. Yeah, but he was in fact much more uh, sort of mouth and, and not so much on the trousers front. Yeah. You know, yeah. same with the, yeah. you know all the, all the prosecutions in Wall Street. Yes, I mean, he did bring down the mafia, you might say. Yes, and he got uh, John Gotti behind bars and all that. That's but right. a lot of the Wall Street stuff that he did was very much um, yeah. uh, all about what it looked like rather than actually the substance of it, you know? Yeah, that's absolutely right, yeah. Steve I mean, points out that Billy Joel song, uh, and Andrew as well, mm. uh, is actually called Moving Out, Anthony's song. Yeah. You know, who needs a house out oh, it, oh, that's the one, uh, and if that's what it's all that's about. It. That's the one, yeah. That's what it's From all about. Stranger. Album. That's what it's all uh, about. I thought you weren't going to sing. I'm moving out. That's well, it, yeah. I think, we, I think we definitely have another yeah. blast of my um, Don't Look Back in Anger before the end of the show. I don't think we need it for the end of the show. Listen, you talk about, uh, you know, what happens in America affects the rest of the world, OK? Yeah. Now, in one of my historical journals, I've come across the fact that um, the American Civil War yeah. actually caused mass starvation in Lancashire. Did you realise In that? Lancashire? Yeah, no, Lancashire. I didn't know that, no. Because what happened was the, um, the Confederate ports were all blockaded mm. by the North. Right. Because, of course, they wanted to try and starve them out. Mm. Um, the effect of that is that no cotton was exported from the, uh, the cotton fields in the south. Is that right? To Lancashire, which was the industrial heartland of the world, right. where all the cotton was spun into cloth. Oh, I see. And uh, oh, so, without the cotton, they couldn't make any money. Ex- I exactly, right. exactly. The famine was caused by the blockade of Confederate southern ports, which stopped raw cotton being imported to British and European mills, led to poverty and food shortage across Lancashire. Uh, it was once the most prosperous area of the world as the cradle of the Industrial Revolution. Mm. At the time, Abraham Lincoln, the American president who led the Union. Uh, wrote to the mayor of Rochdale and said, I know and deeply deplore the sufferings which the working men of Manchester and in all Europe are called to endure in this crisis. <coughs> How extraordinary. Um, and as a result of this, <coughs> excuse me, one writer, a guy called uh, Willief, not Willie, Willief, Willief. Willief. Uh, Willief. Well, that's his first name. Yeah, right. yeah. He was, a right, he was 1862, 1862. Willief uh, Cooliam. Um, wrote in the Burnley Free Press and Advertiser, a very famous newspaper. I've never heard of it. In, yeah, well, I have. It's still going today. Is it? In 1862-63, he said... Um, what did he work? Oh, he, he started writing poems. He started writing poems yeah. about, um, about the famine and the shortage and all this kind of stuff, OK? And they've now become massively famous because they were written in local Lancashire dialect, OK? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, are you going to read them out for us? Then? I'm going to read one. A thousand such poems exist. Uh, in one newspaper in Burnley, 18 poems were published in a three-year period, and they were all written by this guy, um, uh, William uh, Coonliam, OK? We- no, Willief. Willief, Willief, sorry. Willief, Willief Coonliam, <coughs> yeah. Not Will I Am. No, Willief, Willief. Uh, and I'm going to read you this one. It's right. called Homely Chat by Willief Coonliam. And, and is he a Lancastrian, then? He's a Lancastrian, and it's written in Lancastrian dialect. OK. OK? All right, let's, have, let's hear it. OK, here we go. Un cotton, they insane, in's getting dar. Unseech stuff, it is Rayleigh. <laughs> it's all through this Mary Kay war. 
are wuntha what the end on it will be. Mm. I ut are aus. We are not and salt. Sounds more like northeast dialect. Uh, it? Well, I'm, where you're doing it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll get. Uh, Can you not get into Vera or yeah, something? Okay, I, uh, no, I'll get into Lancastrian. You know, eh, Gilda, on deck on myself, <laughs> us kappa a boot. That's still Geordie. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to get thanks, yeah. Eh, us copper about like our gals, if all nobbit year to factory bell. That's better. On cotton and sen, it's getting dar. On such stuff, it is rally. It's all through this Meriki war. Back to Geordie. Yeah, then. sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to. Uh, no, you've done that bit. Did, uh, yeah, hang on, hang on. Um, no, very war, no, that's, no, I'm repeating the chorus. Oh, you is, know. is that the chorus? Yeah, and then it comes in. Eight children, on dick, on mesel. Uh, <laughs> hang, hang on. Um, back to need Newcastle. to go back into Lancaster, you know. Eh, lad, eight children on deck on That's but self. That's Yorkshire, self. isn't it? Those cap it a like a cult, if I know but it. Anyway, th- bit these, like a cult. these yeah. have become uh, very famous, and the dialects were written phonetically. Well, it's like Scots, isn't it? Yeah. Where you see uh, people who are trying to preserve the Scots language. Yes, that's right, yes. You don't yes. know what I'm talking about, do you? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Well, I know what exactly is the Scots so. language? What do you mean? Well, you don't know what, you weren't listening, were you? Yeah, the Scots language is mm. Celtic. No, it isn't. It is. No, it's not. What do you it's think called it Scots. It's not what I think it is. I'm yeah. telling you what it is. Yeah. It's Scots. So, so uh, and, and where does this come from? It's a different dialect. It was like the kind of thing that mm. Rabbi Burns used to write in. You know? Rabbi. It's an old-fashioned way yeah. of speaking in, uh, a, a, in a Scottish yeah, language. It doesn't seem to make any sense to me. What do you mean it doesn't now, make any sense? Uh, well, I'm like what you just read out. Yeah. Now, listen, we hey, need to... Hey, by the way, I want to ask you a question. Yes. Have you seen the back pages this morning? Yes. Uh, have you seen that really nice picture of Ronaldo with his mother? Yes, I have. What do you make of that? I'm rather unsettled by it. Unsettled? Yes. I thought you would be. Yes. Why? Well... She's got a very low top on, low-cut top. She's got a low-cut top on, right, mm. and uh, she is resting her head yeah. on her son's thigh, for want of a better word. No, or, she's not. She's resting his leg. on his shoulder. On his shoulder, yeah, OK. Well, it's a bit different. Yeah. I and... mean, if her head was on his thigh, I think I'd be a bit disturbed yeah, by but, it. Yeah, but, but, I mean, it's... Her head's on his shoulder. Uh, OK. What's so, wrong with that? It's on his shoulder, but it's a very affectionate picture, isn't it? You know what I mean? I do, I do find it rather... Why? Well, what's wrong with it? Rather unsettling. I mean, he looks very studious. He's got a nice pair of glasses on. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's got a beautiful jacket. Well, do you not think it's a bit unsettling? No, why? Well, it, because it, there's a, such a look of adoration in his mother's eyes, you know, as she well, they're both leans looking on off his in, shoulder. And, well, they're both off looking at something else, actually. They're not yeah. looking at each other. See, he's got this massive zip on his jacket where normally normal people have a like a you know a, a pocket, a breast pocket. He's got this massive zip. Massive zip. We've seen the size yeah. of his watch. Yeah, the watch looks huge as well. Yeah, and he's also got a bracelet on underneath. Or is that another watch? No, it's a, no, that's a bracelet. And on his other hand, he's got another bracelet on his other wrist, and then he's got rings and all that sort of stuff. Clearly, a very uh, wealthy man. Well, three hundred sixty-five thousand pounds a week. Yes, that's right. It's not he's, bad, is it? No, I think it's a very loving picture. Do you? I yeah. think it's a little bit weird. Well, they're obviously very close. Yeah, they are, obviously, yeah. It says well, what's wrong with him being close to his mother? Oh, nothing wrong at all, but she? I think she's, uh, like, his permanent carer, for want of a better word. I mean, she's... You well, know, I don't think he needs a carer. No, but there was a picture, wasn't there, during the summer when he was having a summer break and all that, of her actually oiling his body. Yeah. You know, and... Well, he uh, takes her on holiday, yeah. Yeah, exactly, and all that kind of well, stuff. Well, they're obviously very know. close. I mean, have you seen mm. the film, Ronaldo? I have not. I have it on uh, a DVD. Is it good? Uh, it's actually surprisingly good, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. And it's an insight into his life. He's a really interesting guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. he gets a lot of abuse uh, by people in this country because, mm-hmm. one, he used to play for Manchester United and also, two, because he's rich. Yeah. But he's actually a really interesting guy. Yeah, very good. So I would recommend you watch it. You can get it on Netflix. Eh? Hey? You can get it on Netflix. On Netflix. Andy uh, Murray is uh, probably going to the Scotland game on uh, Friday. Oh, is he? Mm. Are you going? I'm not going, no. Why not? Uh, to be honest... It's it's a big effort, and uh, we've got a lot coming up and a lot we've got to get on to. Mm. And it, although it's a traditional and iconic game, yeah. it's not going to be a great game of football. Well, let's hope for the best, mm. you know, rather than the worst. That's mm. what I'd like to say. Mm. And uh, I'm hoping Scotland will put in a decent performance and make it a proper competition. Yeah. But we shall see. It'll be live right here on Talk Sport, of course. Uh, this is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. The two mics. Simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Yeah. 
every time I hear it, this, you know. Well, it sounds like the more I hear it, the more I think that's the drunken ramblings of a guy who's out of control, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and he was singing over a... Well, uh, it was quite late. Singing over a karaoke version of a, a well-known there, there song. There is no karaoke where, version. Where the there's karaoke clearly, version has no voice. There's what's, the known, there's what's known as a voice guidance on it, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know what you think about voice yeah, guidance, yeah, but obviously yeah. you never use it because your yeah. singing is bloody awful. Uh, here's one oh, from Becky. Oh, that's Becky. very nice, isn't don't it? Don't ask Porky who he wants to win the US mm. election. The Porky Jinx is strong these days. Mm, mm. And then she adds that it's possibly the worst Porky impersonation ever. Definitely clips of the week potential. Nothing like Lancastrian. Yeah, well, I must, I must admit, it was a little bit off-beam, that one. But uh, I was speaking in a dialect that was over 200 years old. Uh, yes, indeed. That's my and, defence. And uh, it's very, mm. very difficult sometimes mm. to interpret that properly. Uh, Proud Dad said, has Porky been put in reverse? Mm. I couldn't understand a word. Well, that was uh, I see what you mean, yeah, yeah. Well, that was a Lancastrian dialect, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Mm. Right, OK, so we've got a big night ahead tonight. Well, we have got a very big night, so make sure you get plenty of sleep. The... You're turning up here, you know, with sort of wide-eyed and legless, as it were. The world is going to change, mm. whichever way you look at it. Well, I suppose it is, because you know what happens, and we've mm. only got ten seconds to say this, but, mm. you know, the final year of any pr- presidency before the election, mm. nothing happens. Complete waste of time. So there'll be time. a load happening uh, as of tomorrow. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> we are the Two Mics. Look at the light! Don't forget to follow the Two Mics at the Two Mics on Twitter and on YouTube. Just look for Two Mics TV. And the next thing is he popped up in, like, somewhere like Yorkshire, and he was making cheese. And he, I remember reading a piece about him doing this cheese and he said that he'd become big mates with Alex Burke. Oh, yeah. Is it Alex Burke? Alex Blur. Uh, Blur. <laughs> no. What's his name? <laughs> Hang on, who am I talking about Alex Blur. No, we'll go with that. Well, it depends how long you let the monkey uh, bash on the keys of um, a typewriter. If you love the Two Mics podcast, you'll love the live show. Weekday overnights from 1am on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053am and via the TalkSport app. TalkSport, your Premier League station with exclusive commentaries every weekend. What an absolute corker. TalkSport. Well, I, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't know because I'm not an award-winning actress. Anyway, the point of my story <laughs> is, what's your problem? Hmm?